uh, versus bringing this first to the commission. And then, um, because, I mean, so this, this might open a Pandora's box that what are we gonna have next? Somebody come and ask us for, I don't mean pose a, a strip joint or something like that because they wanna put the diversity in our town. I mean, I just think that the proper way of doing this would have been to go to the planning and zoning board first. That's all. Well, it's gonna, it's, that's the next stop right now. So if we, if we approve this, it goes to the planning board and then it comes back to us for second reading. Tina? Yeah, Mayor, if I can, just to explain to Commissioner Velasquez, this is exactly the proper procedure. In order to have an ordinance, it needs to go, be, the commission has to decide to move forward with an ordinance, which we did last meeting. And the ordinance comes to us, then it goes to planning and zoning, and then it comes back to us for second reading. So, um, and I, I tried to have as many, you know, I'd ask the legal team to put in safeguards so that we don't end up with a dog shop on every corner. But I do think, um, you know, I'm, I'm basically supporting this because uh, it's a diverse business in addition to our business district where we have vacancies and, um, you know, it, it serves a purpose, it serves a need. And, uh, you know, I, I try to put safeguards in so we don't end up with one on every corner. And I believe that's there so that we would just have this one business. Thank you, Tina. Uh, I have another question. Uh, and this okay, is, go, go ahead. Sorry. Um, and is this uh, business also having like a daycare, doggy daycare, or it's just grooming? I can, I can answer that, I think. Please. Um, Okay, I, I believe it's just uh, grooming. And to, to answer your question before, there is no sale of animals and that's in the ordinance that there is no sale of animals. So, uh, I mean, you're welcome to make changes to the ordinance. I, I think we really try to thoughtfully put in place um, protections for the town. I, I okay. do have a suggested um, change. Um, I think I saw that it was 800 feet uh, between pet stores, I think it should be a, a bigger, uh, a longer distance, maybe 1,200 feet, so we prevent any kind of, um, so we narrow the space down further. Okay, is that a motion? Oh, the, we already well, we, motion, wait, wait, we? wait, 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 wait. Well, it's an amendment to that. Well, listen, there's a motion There's a motion to approve um, this ordinance on the table right now. So I think the, uh, the person that made the motion would have to accept your amendment, and then we'd have to get an acceptance. So maybe you want to tell us what the proposed is, the 1,000 feet? 1,200. Tina? Uh, yeah, I would, I would have to defer to legal because legal helped me with this as far as how much feet we would need in between the, bis uh, the distance in between businesses. So um, I'm, I'm not really qualified to make that call. I, I can accept the amendment, but I'd like to be sure that it's, you know, works out legally. Okay. Uh, Lily, do you or Tony want to comment on that? Um, Tony, if you could, um, I think Tony did the analysis and would be most helpful. Sure. The, the actual distance from 94th to 96th Street is 1,300 feet. Um, that's why that's where the 850 feet comes from. It, it basically uh, eliminates any possibility of, of any other site. Now, if you wanted to increase it to 1,200, you could certainly do that. Um, that would certainly eliminate the possibility. Uh, it's it's it, it does it does the same job. Um, it would. Uh, there would still at 1,200 feet be the possibility of a, of a potential two of these uses. Okay. I, I mean, I would feel more comfortable with having 1,200 um, feet. And if it's legally okay, then you'd accept that change. I would be for um, voting for this. Okay. okay. I can accept that. All right. Thank Does the seconder know. accept that? Okay. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Charles? Um, I'm, I'm voting for this uh, because I agree that, um, you know, it adds to the diversity of the downtown business district. Pets and dogs are a part of our community, uh, whether it's in the dog park or um, wanting them to have water at different points on the beach throughout town um, to maintain their wellness. Um, any sanitary and health related issues are separate um, and need to be considered and enforced when appropriate. 
Um, and I'm confident that the town can do this when it applies the laws that are on the books, whether it's inside grocery stores or at restaurants or um, at the existing um, veterinary clinic that was approved prior. And to me, that was what opened the doors. I haven't heard complaints about that. In fact, I've heard good things from members of the community. And this will just supplement that. And uh, But we do have to maintain a balance. Um, there are safety issues with dogs. Not everyone likes dogs. There are risks. Um, and uh, it just adds to another, it adds another layer to risks of COVID and, um, and other things that we just have to be careful to maintain a balance. I think this does that and, uh, and moves towards um, a healthy business district with diversity and uh, fewer vacancies. And we've seen a lot of good activity I have um, over the holidays downtown. And let's hope that that continues and moves forward. It's becoming a lively business district. It always was to some extent, but I think it's, um, it's on its way to be more and I hope so. Thank you, Charles. Anyone else? Nellie? I just wanted to say that I actually saw one of these pet shops um, in uh, actually in Cocoa Beach over the weekend, and it's very cute. It's very nice. They have it very well set up, nice and clean. I was, uh, it was very nice, I have to say. Okay. So. Sandra, would you go ahead and call the question then, please? Mayor, I have a public speaker. Okay, bring him on. George Kusulas, if you could please state your name and address for the records and your comments. Uh, George Kuslis, 9225 Collins Avenue. Uh, Commissioner Velasquez's uh, amendment, I think, is, is well intended. I just want to add, the, the town, as you heard, is barely over 1,200 feet long. And if you take the Publix and the Wells Fargo out of it, essentially a 1,200 foot limit means there will be one. And, and I just want you to take into account and, and maybe think about slightly reducing that number. Um, each block face, just so you know, is about 600 feet uh, of um, building frontage. So anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else, Sandra? Please call the question. Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Commissioner Salazar? Um, can I address George's point just now? I just want to make sure from legal that we're allowed to, to make that amendment because we've created, a, you know, a monopoly, I guess, by only allowing Okay, one. well. No, because it's 1,200 on both sides, not just one side. Correct, Tony? Both sides of the street. Yeah, you, you're, you're not favoring any one business. It's just they happen to be the one that, that is coming in first. Right. So you're not selecting a business. Right. So we can't have a second one ever with a 1,200 foot. As opposed yeah, to the way it's written, it's a tw it's, it would be a 1,200 foot lineal, lineal dimension. That would right. apply across the street as well. Okay. I, I hear George's point. That's all. I just, you know, that, that is the effect. Of we're only allowing one in town, but that's fine. What's your vote? My vote is yes. Fine. Okay. Castle? Yes. Vice Mayor Paul? Yes. Mayor Burkett? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, Mayor, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt. I, I, if I may, I need to go back to the attorney report and I need to request uh, an executive session with the commission. Um, okay. This is in the case of Beach House Hotel LLC versus the town of Surfside. Case number 2020-025405 CA06 in the Circuit Court of Miami-Dade County. Um, the town was served with a complaint on December 7th uh, for declaratory relief, pre preliminary and permanent injunction in connection with its beach furniture ordinance. Um, so I am asking and announcing an executive session with the commission. This is pursuant to section 286.0.11 subsection eight. Um, and I would ask that the manager coordinate and schedule that shade session in the next two weeks. Is there any objection to that, commissioners? No. Okay, that'll be fine. Thank you. Thank okay, you. we're up. We're up to item five A: design services for reconstruction of the 96th Street Park. That's good news. Um, yes. Sandra, would you please read that out? Yes. A resolution of the Town Commission of the Town of Surfside, Florida, approving an agreement with Sabino Miller Design Studio, PA, for design and architectural professional services for reconstruction of the 96th Street Park providing for authorization and implementation, authorizing the expenditure of funds and providing for an effective date, item 5A. All right, thank you. Is there a motion to move this item forward? I'll motion to move forward. All right, Nellie, second. 
Very good, thank you. Uh, discussion, Vice Mayor? Uh, yes, Mayor, I have an amendment to make for this um, uh, resolution. Uh, I would okay, like to- Okay, well, then we'll have to talk to the motion maker, but go ahead. Okay, well, um, it includes uh, additional services as a kayak launch uh, assessment, and we haven't gotten the results yet from the survey, so I think it's a little bit premature. I think the scope may change once that's done, and there are several considerations regarding that. Uh, let me just, the main one is, um, I believe it's page 241. Excuse me a minute. Uh, I was wondering that too. I, I would like to get, I think, wasn't this about getting the team on board and didn't we have provisions in the agreement to add or take out the kayak portion of the work? Uh, Madam Attorney, Mr. Manager? Yes, it could be taken out. Okay, so Tina, does that address your concern or was it something more than that? Yes, I mean, I mean, you know, in, in further review of this, um, I, I mean, I feel that it it would be better to wait till we have the survey results. Although it's actually page two forty four, there are three street ends that are on Point Lake, and those will not work because we don't, uh, own, you know, the lake is privately owned. And and on the same page in part one, it states that uh, town will provide the team with copies of existing deeds demonstrating ownership of the uplands and submerged lands on which facilities will operate. So un until, unless we know for sure we have that for all these street ends, I don't think we should be including them at this point. I, I would rather see the results of the survey to see which street ends we're looking at and then move forward with this. I, I'm not opposed to this. I just think it's the wrong timing. Okay, Commissioner Salzhauer and then Nelly. I agree with uh, Vice Mayor Paul, and I brought this up with the with the manager and Jason when they when we did the briefing. I think that we have to strike the the whereas clause that includes the extra forty thousand dollars for them. It's forty thousand dollars, a lot of money for them to look at every possible location in town, because it would actually only cost if we narrowed it down based on the survey or based on practicality, like the vice mayor saying. A lot of areas are not possibilities. If we narrowed it down to three or four choices, it would only cost thirteen or fourteen thousand to do that analysis. Right. So to spend thirty nine thousand dollars on something that we don't need, you know, I really feel like when we spend money for the town, we should be spending it like it's our own money. And I don't think that's a good. I think we should take that clause out, wait for the kayak survey results, like the vice mayor said, then narrow down some locations, and then negotiate for you know to spend thirteen, maybe ten thousand dollars to have them do the pros and cons of those locations to make a decision, but to just spend $40,000 when we already know that a lot of locations are not possible or not feasible, seems like wasteful. Um, I'd rather focus on what we do know, which is the park part of it. So if we take that out, I'd like to support this and move it forward, but we do need to take that portion out of this um, motion. All right, Nelly. Uh, and then yes. Charles. Um, as, as the motion maker, I definitely agree with, um, with uh, uh, Vice Mayor Paul, um, I don't think that this is the appropriate place to be spending this money. Um, there was a list of uh, a couple of different uh, locations. That Nelly, we, we're not hearing you too well. Uh, yeah. uh, Jose? Jose? Yes, I will hear you loud and clear. Really? Yes. Nobody else can. I can. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, got, you got quiet, but we can hear you. Did you hear, how far did you hear? Should I say everything all over again? Well, we can hear, but just speak very loudly. Oh, okay. It sounds like you're way far away from the mic now. <laughs> okay. No, what I was saying that I, as the motion maker, I agree with uh, uh, Vice Mayor Paul, and I would definitely take that out of the, um, the resolution. And um, I think uh, when, when, I, when we had our briefing with the town manager, um, a list of possible locations uh, was shown to me. And um, I think that, you know, those were great locations. And I think maybe if each one of us takes a look at it and maybe also gives their opinion on which places um, would be interesting for a kayak launch, I think there was like two or three that I think were uh, good places. And we don't need to spend $40,000 to say, okay, put it on 94th Street or put it on uh, 88th Street or put it inside the park. Um, I think those $40,000 could be spent on um, better equipment for our park and for our children. 
So I definitely agree with uh, Commissioner Paul and, and Eliana on this one. Thank you. Okay, Charles. Yeah, and as either the motion maker or the seconder, depending on how that went down, because I wasn't completely clear, um, I'm fine with this too. I would, however, like to have um, the notion of a kayak launch in that park as part of the plan. Um, it's the only place that actually everyone pretty much agrees makes sense, and there has to be some kind of pathway for access. Um, so it should be included. It was my, I brought this up too. It was my understanding that this was an optional component that could be, um, could be evoked or not. Um, and that's why I, you know, I'm supporting it as is, but clearly, um, yeah, we, we've seen a lot of uh, details and, and devils in the details for the kayak um, initiative. And, um, but I don't want to negate having a, an accessible path to, launch a kayak in the park as part of the, the vision for this park. Um, my, my main issue going forward with this is there's been talk back and forth about what exactly, what exact facilities are gonna be there, even notion of a second story and additional perhaps classroom space. If this is gonna move beyond basic facilities, meaning restrooms, washrooms, maybe some storage for some um, park related equipment and staffing, then this is a separate programming issue um, because that leads to other issues of access, parking, um, additional maintenance and cleaning, um, which we have not vetted, um, but uh, you know, replacement and upgrade of facilities as, we've, as I think is a part of this should be it. Um, but I just don't want us to go off on a tangent of a, a big additional building that's supporting programming that hasn't been defined. Thank you, Charles. I, I think it's important that we remember that uh, we all promised to get this park done. So that's that's the number one thing we got to keep in mind. Uh, number two, the, uh, the kayak thing was an adjunct that I believe, at least the people that I've talked to believe it should be in the park. And uh, there could be others, but there are hurdles um, with respect to the other locations because one of the things that I'd like to make sure we do is if we're gonna put a public park, and that's what it would end up being, in the neighborhood area next to the residential houses, we gotta make sure how the residents feel about that and all those residents in that area and all those people coming to that park. So that's, we've gotta balance the needs of the residents in those locations with the needs of the, the people that wanna use a kayak park in addition to the location a kayak launch, I'm sorry, in addition to the kayak launch that I think belongs in the park. So now, now let's get back to what the contract says. It was my understanding that right now we were going to hire these, uh, these designers to design the park and come back to us with uh, schematics and suggestions on how the park should lay out, which is what I fully expect is going to happen. I also expect that they had a part in that contract that allowed them to go ahead and make arrangements to put the kayak launch in the park. And I think that the other $40,000 was, and I agree with all the commissioners that have said that I think we can do that uh, on our own. A lot of that legwork and save a lot of that money. One of the things I wanna bring to everybody's attention is that that survey that we're doing online allows people to vote multiple times. So if you wanna vote many, many times for the kayak launch or come back and, and have your opinion <laughs> repeated several times, you can do it with the way the system was set up. So I think it's gonna be you know, incumbent upon us to try to devise a way to, to, to glean what the true intent of the public was with respect to the online voting. Uh, I'm more interested in seeing what's gonna happen when we get back the, uh, the flyers. Um, by the way, um, as of this date, uh, how many flyers do we have back, Sandra, do you know? No, Mayor, the, I believe um, to the manager that um, the communications department is the one receiving it. I think it's actually Rachel who's compiling okay. them. Rachel, is Rachel on? Can she tell us how many she's gotten back? She's not on, and I, I know that I'm we're... All, I'm going to promote her right now. Oh. Um, I can maybe give some, this is Mallory, I can maybe give some insight into that. I spoke okay, with... Okay, Mallory. Hi. Hi. Um, I spoke with Rachel earlier today and she 
told me that they had received a little over 400 online results. Now, I don't know how much she's been able to dig into those, um, and I can certainly get back to you and, and, and check on that tomorrow as well. Um, I'm, I'm more interested in the, uh, in, the, in the actual paper results because, like I said, the online results can be repeated over and over again. Right, and I can, I can tell you a little bit about that too. I probably have a stack of 30 to 40 on my desk right now, and I, I haven't very been Very good, to okay. <laughs> That's what they I are. wanted to know. Thank, thank, you, thank you very much, uh, Eliana right. and then Nellie. Okay, you want to start my timer? I'm going to reset the timer. Okay, hi, thanks. So, um, first of all, I've, you know, as you know, this has been sort of an area that I've been working in in the town for 15 years now with the community center and with the Parks and Rec. And now um, Commissioner Velasquez is doing that with the Parks and Rec. And for starters, and I know that Commissioner Kessel is new to the park vision, but from the get go, a very, very pressing need was for programming space, not new programming, but for the current programming. And a building, a two-story building was always part of the vision for that park because when the kids go there or anybody's in the park, when it rains, everyone has to leave because there's no safe place to take shelter. So in the summer, when there's summer camp or in the winter or anything, literally if it thunders and you know it rains for a half an hour and then it's fine, everyone's gotta go home. They have to close the park, the kids are sitting there, they have no place to eat, they have nothing. It's it's kind of a disaster as well. We are badly need because we never got to do the two story community center that we wanted. We need the programming space so we can run classes at the same time. So for example, the community center can be a place where we run the adult yoga classes and at the park where the kids are anyway, while the soccer is going on inside, they can have the karate class or the kids dance class or the kids, whatever other classes. And that park really is more of a kid central place. Um, and so that building, it's not an optional, it's an integral part of that park because we very much need them to have a place that's bug free, sun free, safe to eat their lunch also during camp and during the summer and much of the, the year in Florida. And we also need them to, we need to have that programming space. So that is something that was put to bed a long time ago. What's frustrating is that every time a topic comes up, somebody who's new to the topic wants to reinvent the wheel. And some, you know, when we did that with the community center, someone would come in and say, I want a bowling alley. And then we'd spend two weeks debating about something that was already decided. So that's one thing. The second thing that people need to understand is that our park is a park for Surfside residents. We are able to close it for and use it just for Surfside activities. If we use the seawall for anything, because, because we took state money to fix that seawall, that park becomes public in the truest sense of the word. It has to be accessible to every member of the public from anywhere. We cannot close it for town only events. It changes the, de it changes the dynamic of that park. It changes the milieu for the block. It changes the parking situation. It changes everything about that town. There are other areas of town that we can put a kayak launch. And I believe that there's a few commissioners that support the idea of buying other land somewhere else in town and putting it there. I don't think we should conflate the two issues. I think that access to water is a danger for children. I don't think that's an adult park. It never was intended to be, and it should not be. I think we should have an adult centered park somewhere else in town. And I'm happy to support the purchase of land for that. But turning our only private Surfside Park into a public area just so you can put a kayak launch is really short-sighted. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tina? And then uh, yeah, Nelly? just to, um, just to uh, go uh, continue with that, regarding the seawall project, I had investigated this when I first looked into the kayak launch because um, it wasn't as simple as people think it is, and that's why we... I, suggested the survey so we could see the location. We had this the seawall project done on basically all the public seawalls in Surfside. So if any of those locations are chosen, uh, we need to go back to the fine grant and see if we can, um, you know, give them back their money for that particular space so that we can not have to make it a public space. Um, the other thing too, why I, I'm a little reluctant for this, uh, thank you for the support because, um, Oh, as, to my understanding, after the uh, seawalls were repaired, the street ends were landscaped. So um, I don't know how much of that had been done already, and I don't know why we would redo that if it has been done re in recent years. Uh, but primarily, it, you know, we don't know the results of the survey. I really think it's important to, I mean, of course, I do support uh, an, an adult park in a different location. However, if 
if the 96 Street Park is the location that people chose, then we, we need to look into how we keep it for Surfside residents only. Thank you. Uh, Nelly? Uh, yes, um, I to agree that we definitely have to make sure that the park is private. Um, I, I, I haven't heard of this seawall project before. Um, and I, I'd like to get Lily's input on this, if that's okay, um, Charlie, regarding the seawall situation um, being private or not. And if we would have to pay this money back and how much would it, that particular amount be that Tina mentions um, I'm okay with having the, the kayak park at the 96th Street Park. Uh, there can be different ways of preventing the children from getting into the um, kayak park, um, maybe putting a fenced area. Um, I'm also okay with buying another piece of land. I particularly have suggested the 88th Street um, empty lot. I think that lot would be amazing. Um, and it also gives a park to that side of town which in this moment does not have anything. So if you if people have children that are older than, you know, a toddler, they really can't, they have no park. Their park is all the way at 96th Street, which is quite far to walk with um, your, with your children. Um, so I think that that park at that lot would be amazing. And to have a kayak launch there would be great as well. I do think that there should be a portion of that park that is for children as well not just all adult items, um, you know, a walk path, it could be some exercise machines and stuff to that nature. But um, I do think that that should also have um, items for smaller children as well, you know, swings, the park, whatever. Um, but yeah, that, that was my question on, on the seawall project. Well, let's see if Lily can give you an answer. And I like Tina's idea about paying the money back potentially because we want to reserve as many rights for our residents as we can. Well, I have one other question, sorry. Um, Go ahead. And it was, oh boy, no, I forgot. Sorry, Go ahead, Lily, well, I might remember by Charles, the time. You <laughs> Charles, I'll get you in a second. Sure, Let's let Lily yeah. answer that question and then we'll go to Charles. Yeah, so as part of the funding for those seawall restoration projects, the town entered into um, grant agreements with the state of Florida, the fine agreements, and there are restrictions in those agreements that require um, that the seawall areas be open to the general public and not restricted just to Surfside residents. Having said that, I believe we could explore the possibility of contacting the state of Florida and potentially uh, having the restrictions released only as to the seawall in front of 96th Street Park if we were to repay those funds. Um, and I believe there's other options available as well. Maybe that area is singled out uh, for public use and the rest of the park isn't. So I think there's options under the agreements that we could definitely explore. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as, as is often said, perception is nine tenths of the law. And um, I'd like to just point that out with all due respect. I come from a space where um, feasibility assessments, environmental impacts, indirect and direct cost assessments and impacts are included with every project. Um, and sometimes we don't do that with these types of projects. Um, I will not rely on a 15 year perspective that says that there's a programming requirement for multiple classes at a given time when based on my um, experiential experience and what I hear from members of the community, um, as well as people that work for the town and would like to see some more activity in different spaces. The fact of the matter is the community center spaces now are underutilized. They're used for storage. They're empty most of the day. There's um, high demand for after school classes and summer uh, when the when there's a lot of great swimming classes taught, otherwise it sits idle. Um, the notion that we were we were going to build facilities and then they'll come and we'll have the money um, is, I think, um, um, short sighted at best. <laughs> and um, and I'm going to speak <laughs> with regardless of hands up or whatever, um, because this just reinforces itself. We've seen this with some other decisions that were rat you know, I think rashly made with presumptions that there would somehow be 
um, um, you know, scenarios that are unsustainable that weren't based on actual assessments and facts, but, um, but more on conjecture. Um, so I think that with this project, there should be um, a programmatic um, and impact assessments as, as addendums because it just makes sense. And it's, it's helpful to the town to know what its priorities are. Um, it's helpful for me to make a decision. I'm, I'm all for this project, uh, but once we start to talk about it's for some and not for others, um, there's access, you know, every time you set up access issues, it's to keep some people out. Um, sometimes it's members of our own community and fellow residents that won't be able to share that space. I don't like to come from that place. I like to come from an open access space um, where people are free to, to go there, um, regardless of whether they have kids. Um, I wish I had kids, I happen to not. Um, and I have great respect and support for members of the community um, who do have kids. And, um, and as we see with a lot of the Bay Drive emails that have come up, there's also safety issues on Bay Drive with the traffic that's even there now, um, where people are very concerned about, you know, that one exit that heads east to the ocean and Collins, um, that somehow there's gonna be a lot of traffic pushed there um, if we do anything on Byron. So apparently there's a lot of issues down there by the 96th Street Park that um, we need to assess. Thanks, Charles. I I think the notion that, uh, you know, someone just mentioned a little while ago that, you know, uh, the science is established, the decision was made, we're only going to do it that way. I think that's wrong headed. I think we're here today, uh, times change, situations change, and we're here evaluating all of the options. We're not going to be sort of constrained by what was dictated a year ago or two years ago or 15 years ago um, when, uh, you know, someone mentioned they've been sitting on a board. Yeah, I was here 15 years ago too. And Charles, your point is well taken. I mean, the utilization component of all of these projects is a big deal. And the cost project, the cost uh, component of the project is a big deal. Um, this issue that has been raised about the seawall is, is good. I'm, I'm glad that was raised tonight because Lily, I'd like you to sort of focus on that in the next couple of weeks and get an answer for that because that's something we want to fix because we don't want to be constrained by an excuse that, uh, you know, we can't put a kayak launch in a park because all of a sudden, you know, there bad things are going to happen. So let's, let's look into that and let's see if we can, you know, address that sort of challenge and then we can move forward. But back to uh, my concerns about what we're doing here. Um, my, again, my understanding with respect to this entire contract with these park designers was, hey, that we found the one that we thought would give us the biggest bang for the buck, okay? B, I think that we absolutely positively need to have them give us some design ideas that this commission and the Parks and Rec uh, uh, group can look at and say, hey, you know what? That one stands out as fabulous. That's the one we need to do, except we need to move the, the green space a little to the left and we need to put the building up a little closer to the street maybe. But we, we absolutely don't want, I don't want as the mayor, and I know that many people who are in this town don't want a preconceived design or plan jammed down their throat right now. And that's what Mr. Manager, I wanna be very careful about. Madam Attorney, I wanna be very careful about that. I wanna make sure that what we're doing is we're hiring a design firm that's gonna work hand in glove with this commission and the parks and recreation folks. And we're gonna get some concepts that we're gonna zero in on, get some community buy-in on. They're, not everybody will agree on everything, but we'll take you know, a consensus, we'll look for a consensus and we will make a decision, pull the trigger and move forward. That's what I'd like to see for my part. Okay, now. That was my say, We're, uh, do, do we want to limit it now to two minutes as we go around folks? Because uh, we're gonna be here all night talking about this and we've got a lot of other stuff. So what I'll do is I'll ask Jose to limit it to two minutes and we'll go around again and we'll start with uh, Eliana. But I was waiting here for a yeah. while, Charlie. Well, I, 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 I've got a list here. I, uh, Nellie, you went right before Charles. But I didn't even get my Eliana three minutes. Was Let's What's that? Last one, go first. I'll go afterwards. That's, I didn't that's, get my three right. minutes. Well, listen, folks, folks, listen. If you don't use up all your time, okay, 
we're we're just going to keep going. You can't come back and say I want to finish. Well, no, because I now. asked I asked a question and then it was answered and then I was never able to come back and and, and finish. All right, well, look at I, I apologize for that. So let's how many more how many minutes did you have left? Did you have two? Like a minute. I just okay, have so a couple of questions further. I, I just ahead. wanted to know, um, does the survey have a due date? When is the due date? February 1st, I think. February 1st? Okay. Okay. Um, also, I also would like to know how much money um, did we get in grants to for the seawall project? Um, so if someone can send me an email tomorrow or once we have that number. Um, so... Um, I'd like to get that amount. Okay. And then um, I had also suggested um, I, uh, regarding Charles's comment about the space and everything, and I agree with a lot of things that he says, I had also suggested um, earlier this year um, uh, re relocating the offices in um, the community center to town hall so we could free up that space for activities for our residents for you know, a karate class like Eliana mentioned or a party room or whatever it is, those are valuable um, space that we can relocate to town hall and free up all the rooms in, in town, in the community center to create um, additional spaces that we might need more so on that side of town because the community center is kind of like in the middle of our, our town. So that's Thank all you. I wanted to say. Thank you, Nelly. Thank you, Nelly. Go ahead, Eliana. Okay. All right. You can start the timer. Um, two minutes. Two minutes. I can't see it. Okay. All right. Um, so I agree. I, th I do think that uh, maybe moving the office space is a good idea, Commissioner Velasquez. Uh, but the the idea, you cannot, and I, and I understand that you cannot judge the programming right now. We're in a pandemic and everything's been shut. So it's really not fair, Mr. Castle, to say that it's a storage facility. It is only a storage facility right now during the pandemic. Otherwise, it is busy nonstop. They have gymnastics classes in there that are packed and sold out. There's after that is a, you know another. They have other classes. They have the karate classes. They have stuff all week long. And people move to this town really because of all of the great family programming. Parks and Rec is the heart of our community. That's why that department is so important. And I think we can hear from, you know, from the director, from Two Million, he's happy to tell you how how much, how badly we need these, you know, more space. And the kids are already in the park. What happens, as I said before, is there's a need for, for safe space for them to go when it rains uh, for that half hour or whatever. And also we can use it for a park. It's not, we're building, not, we're not building space and then hoping people will come. We have the need for it already. But you are you can't make a decision in the pandemic when we have nothing going on, when this is, I mean, talk to the parents. You'll hear from the community members. I'm sure there's a line of people waiting to speak tonight on this issue that have been clamoring for more programming space and a covered area and a safe space to get out of the rain for the kids so that they don't have to, you know, when we have camp, they literally have to bust them and their day is over and they're done because it rained for half an hour or there was lightning five miles away or seven miles away, as opposed to just being able to go inside. So that was part of the, even before I started getting involved in this for years, that has been part of the vision of using that space there. And it's not just for kids, it's for adults too, it's for anyone. But the point is, once we have this space, it's going to be used. We should have had a second floor in the community center to begin with, but we know that didn't happen. And this is what we can do now that we're spending the money and we're doing that park and we're going to do it well. And it's not my opinion and it's not pre-think, but it's the, community, the com Parks and Rec Committee has talked about Thank this you. ad nauseum. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Tina. Yes, thank you, Mayor. And, and yes, I'd like to hear from the public speakers here as well. I just wanted to uh, touch back on the seawalls. Um, the seawall project was a little bit before my time. I believe I had just been elected when it was the second phase of it. And um, you have to realize when the seawall, it's not a lot of money. It's, it's, I mean, it's a lot of money if you don't have it, but it's not a lot of money compared to what's in our budget now. But it wasn't in our budget at the time, so we really needed this project when it came about because the seawalls were crumbling from what I, I've heard. The seawalls aren't built very high, and if, you know, what I read in this report from the design firm is that um, they're looking at raising the seawall in certain places. And I had asked uh, Lily, how would that affect these grants we have? Um, because 
if we already accepted grant money for these seawalls and then we may make them higher, then that changes things. So, um, you know, as we go, there's going to be a lot of considerations regarding the seawalls. And I don't know if we have to jump into that right now. We, we just really have to first see uh, what we decide upon for the kayak launch and then take it from there as far as um, the seawall and how we make that uh, for residents only. Thanks, Tina. Next person. Hey, buddy. Okay, let's uh, hear. Okay, Charles, go ahead. Thank you, everybody. And um, and I'll, I'll be short. Um, you can even just leave 44 seconds for me. Um, I support families. I support everyone. Um, I, I just tend to be at times a big picture thinker. And I see we have a lot of seniors who um, who supported me and support me and voted for me. And, um, and I don't see a lot of senior programming in this town. Um, you know, there are activities in the condos. Um, I think Tim does a great job. And, um, and I think that the, par the, plan the Parks and Rec Committee does a great job based on the minutes and what I see. Um, and I'm not, I'm not questioning anyone's intentions of the past or the present, um, but just offering a big per bigger perspective. Um, some of what's shared actually makes me more nervous than, <laughs> than, than, uh, than comfortable. Um, if we're providing shelter for people in storms, I don't under really understand that. Are we supposed to do that in the tot lot? They wanted restrooms too at the beach. Um, and at the community center, there's coverage that you can go to that's not indoors, but it's underneath a shelter. Um, so that makes me question actually the validity of some of the decisions made in the past, but not the intentions. I think everyone mean, and everyone has the best of intentions. Let's just do this right, as the mayor said. Thanks. Very good. Thank you, Charles. Let's open it up to the speakers. Uh, Sandra? Yes, Mayor. First speaker is Jeff Rose. Jeff, if you could please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Happy New Year and good, uh, good evening, everyone. Jeff Rose, 8851 Froud Avenue. I just want to say that was a great idea about potentially paying back for the seawall at the park. Um, one of the other things I wanted to bring up with this, um, Commissioner Vasquez has it on the agenda, but it's, it's much farther down, is the potential purchase of the pink house or not pink house. Whether it's a good idea or a bad idea, that's going to be obviously open for you guys as a commission to discuss. But this is the time to really consider it. I know we tried to buy a couple of years ago for half the price of two and a half million dollars. But if you're going to really look into expanding the park and doing this whole new park, you should at least have the serious discussion before you design the park, if that's even really going to be considered. Um, because that's obviously could change the potential whole design of the park. Um, you could also use tourism money and leave it open just to residents and tourists. And if you do the seawall there, you could do the kayak launch there just for that part. And it would just be with for Surfside residents. Now, I'm not saying we should or shouldn't do it, but this is the time to have the discussion before you, do, before you start designing the park. Either really look into purchasing that or just take it off the table and look at other areas. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Joshua Epstein. Joshua, please say your name and address for the record and your comment. Joshua Epstein, 9317 Bay Drive. Listen, I don't know who the mayor has talked to, but I know it's definitely not the will of Surfsiders to have it at the 96th Street Park uh, about the kayak launch. I know if you talk to the residents that live there or actually like in a block's radius of the park, their biggest complaint is the amount of traffic in that one area and that we have an entire town, eight blocks of town, but we have everything at that one park. That one area, whether we buy the new pink house next door, there is not enough, there's the streets there, there's not enough parking there as it is right now. I just looked on next door a couple of days ago, I saw pictures, residents there complaining, even parents that were, had to take their kids to soccer, that they had to double park and there was no room to park there. Especially talking about now closing off Bay Drive. We're closing off Bay Drive, which means, I mean, if we did close off Bay Drive, that would mean that all the traffic would have to go out that one way, which means that for blocks around it, they are now becoming the new Harding Avenue. That is gonna become the new heart of the town. When on the other hand, we can look into buying a piece of land on 88th Street, and that would, um, it would widen the amount of the, the places where residents are going to. When you have a one street that it really can only go one way and not enough parking for the, for the facilities that are already there, it would be foolish to talk about getting additional facilities at that park. We need the second story. I know I personally was in summer camp. It would rain for 30 seconds and we would have to get back on the bus and go home. I know there's not, the, the community center is taken up, I believe, twice a week entirely by gymnastics, by karate. They need additional part, um, space, and I don't think 
it's fair to judge it in the middle of a pandemic, just like we can't judge the traffic on Byron in the middle of a pandemic. You can't judge anything in the middle of a pandemic. And I know if you look before then, our facilities at the community center are always occupied. You have after care there. And especially if we do buy an additional piece of land on 88th Street, we can make it more senior oriented. We can add senior facilities. We can have more senior programming there. I know a wide, like a majority of our town residents are seniors, I think. A lot of them, they make up a huge portion of our town, but we don't have that much programming for them. So I think buying that additional piece of land. And I also think it's important to take into consideration that the mayor's main motive behind putting it in 96th Street Park is him and his rich friend on, friends on Biscaya don't want people in their water. Well, it's not their water and the other residents that bought land next to the park and within three blocks of that park should not have to suffer from additional facilities being put there when the streets already now can't handle it. And so even if, you, even if we get the money back, even if we pay the town, the state back, we need the parking facilities to be able to handle the amount of traffic that would be going to that park. We're, then we're going to another P3. We don't have the parking to be able to facilitate a kayak launch at that park. We don't have, it's a one-way road. We don't have the space on the roads to be able to do that. And that's where all our kids walk and it's gonna be dangerous to put it there. Look at 88th Street, look at some of the street ends, but do not look at 96th Street Park for the kayak launch. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is George Kousalas. George, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. George Kousalas, 9225 Collins Avenue. Um, I think the, the, the issue in front of you is really whether to approve of this firm and move forward into, uh, you know, initiating the contract with them. Uh, that's really what's going on here. And I think a lot of people here have said, you know, it's time to start moving on this. All these other issues you're, you're talking about don't need to delay that decision, I don't think. Um, you know, you, if you look at the price of their contract, and what a likely ad service would be if they actually did work that is truly outside the scope of their contract because you direct them to do something is, is really, you know, in the tens of thousands of dollars, it's small stuff compared to the price of purchasing land at 88th or uh, adjacent to the current park. So I, I would uh, proceed with this um, resolution, go ahead. The other thing is about programming. Uh, it's been brought up, you know, it's true, Commissioner Kessel has brought up, it's very true that programming is, you, you don't ask an architect to design a house and then not tell them kind of how many bedrooms you're gonna need. You know, uh, you know how many kids you have and, and uh, whether you need a kosher kitchen or not. You know, these are all fundamental things. So that's important. Uh, Commissioner Salsauer has pointed out that there's been a lot of thinking about what needs to go into this. So that that's an important thing. And the mayor has pointed out that nothing is ever cast in stone. We need to be able to um, rely on the expertise and the creativity of the um, um, architect, the landscape architect to surprise us. So all of these things fit together into the same thing. And finally, regarding the purchase of land that is either adjacent or across town, I think once you initiate this exercise, then you will kind of know how is the basic park, the, the, the footprint you have now, how is that laying out and you will know what does the uh, other parcel really add to you? Is it a value or not? Does it have the, 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 the downsides that you just heard from the previous speaker? Maybe these are all things you can evaluate in real time as the design evolves at minimal extra cost if it comes to that in your contract. And then you may come to the conclusion the 88th thing is the street lot is better for a number of reasons just because, because it just that's how things lay out. Uh, you don't want to try and make that decision before you've even started designing because this design phase will teach you a lot about what's possible on the parcel you have. Thank you. Thanks, George. Next speaker, please. Next um, speaker, Mayor, it's Andrew Craven. Andrew, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Uh, Andrew Craven, 9573 Bay Drive. Um, and I appreciate the last speaker. It is kind of a discrete issue on the agenda. Uh, but the topic and discussion has gotten a lot bigger and dovetails with certain other issues that have been discussed or are going to be discussed today. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of activity on next door and um, from residents of Bay Drive about our concerns about the closing of Byron Avenue and the effect it will have on Bay Drive, uh, considering we are really one of the other major roads. As noted, I was the person that took a picture and posted it on next door. Um, last night when we could not park on our street because soccer was being played in the park, which is a public park open to anyone. Um, 
but I'll note that we can judge that during a pandemic because we are in a pandemic and the park is still so busy with activities that we can't park where we live. Next, we're talking about tearing down the building that's there, there and installing a two-story building for yet more activities while there's the discussion of closing Byron, sending more traffic to Bay Drive. And then we get to the final issue of then putting an open kayak launch uh, in the park. Again, a, a public facility. Um, all of these issues you know, affect one group of people that have lived here for years and that bought their houses uh, at a time when, when these conditions did not exist. So uh, I have really grave concerns about all of these concepts um, which seem to be zeroing in on the park and the effect it'll have uh, on the people who live near it. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Next speaker, please. Next speaker, it's David Lombardi. David, please say your name and address for the record and your comment. Hi, uh, 1277 Biscaya Drive. And I'm my wife and I are newcomers to Surfside and while we're renovating the house, the first thing we did is renovate the dock and we bought kayaks and we've been kayaking through your lovely waterways. And I didn't know if all of you know, but 9540 Bay Drive, the house next to the big park, their seawall has collapsed. So, you know, one way or another, it could affect the seawall at the park that you borrowed funds for to have redone uh, a few years back. I, I do think with 23,000 feet of land, that pink house could offer an opportunity for on-site parking and in, a, a simple ingress, egress ability for people to bring their kayaks, put them in the water and, and go. Uh, and, and I don't think you should allow residents to necessarily park there. They can drop their kayaks off. They should go home and maybe come back you know, on bicycle or something, it's just to not clog up that street. But I think it's a great opportunity. You're limited on different ex access points to your waterways in the town. And it would add on to a park that exists already. And uh, that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker, Mandy Divapore. Mandy, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Hi, good evening, Mandiff David, Poor 694 Street. Um, so I actually would, I mean, I'm sure every resident would like to buy, you know, land and, uh, and make parks um, anywhere along the water. The problem is, is that these homes right now are very expensive. And if you want to buy land right now, it is very expensive. And I'm not sure that's something that the town should be Considering, I'm not sure I'm not a finance person, but that's just, it's expensive right now and it's a lot of money and we have to keep going back to the basics. Like that money could be towards um, more children's programming, teenager programming, walkability, um, you know, the same things that come up over and over again, um, you know, beautifying our streets, making make, uh, uh, making our houses prettier or landscape. I don't know, just making like such a beautiful town. But I don't know if so much money is worth it to to build a kayak launch anywhere else. It would be lovely, um, but I don't think it's. I don't think especially right now where we don't know where things are going. Um, I think 96th Street is a great spot for that. We're not a big town. Um, I, I have classes there two, three times a week. Um, it is a little tight, but that's logistics. You know, you have to kind of get around with that with parking, like the gentleman said before, maybe block off that street or whatever. It is a big spot. Um, as for rain coming down and, you know, second floor and yeah, that's also so wonderful and stuff. But in the meantime, what's there is also pretty nice. It does, I mean, the park does need, does need a, a, an upgrade. But as for building, I mean, it would be nice eventually to do that. But I think the residents keep asking for a kayak launch. Um, and the only spot right now is to put it there. Put it along the mural wall, um, have some type of walking area. To, I don't know, or put it on the side, have some type of walking area, attendance, surfside residents only. Definitely doable. And it would be nice to do it sooner than later. Um, that's it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Sam Grinald, Greenwald. Sorry, Sam, please say your name and add to the record in your comments. Yes, hi, my name is Sam Greenwald. I live in 9236 Bay Drive. 
been living there for the past three, four years and living in Surfside for the past seven years. A lovely town, great town, but I can tell you uh, putting a, a kayak launch uh, at the 96th Street Park is going to cripple um, the whatever we have going on there, especially for the kids in general. That Bay Drive, I don't know if any of you have seen what goes on there in the mornings. I mean, it's used by everybody to go to school, to walk to school, to bike to school, on the way to school, on the way back. And as it is, it's like one of the only exits out of Surfside. You put a kayak launch there, you're going to drive so much more traffic. The few people that have houses on that block, first of all, there'd be no parking for the kids to go to the park in general. Now you're talking about these people coming with cars and kayaks. There's got to be another location. 88th Street's pretty quiet. There's many openings there that we can definitely explore. But to go ahead, especially if you want to close now as well, Byron Avenue, and direct all the traffic here, you're talking about like a, a traffic crunch like you've never seen before. The dangers that the kids are going to experience now, I see how fast the cars go as it is right now on Bay Drive. It's, uh, it's dangerous. It's not something that I think is in anyone's best interest. Um, adding that right now is just gonna be horrific for the community. And it's just not a good idea. I know it's nice to be able to get out on the water and everything, but you gotta find another location. You do that and the kids who walk into school are in trouble on the way to school, on the way home from school. Um, that, yeah, it's just something that I don't think is a good idea right now. Um, um, the next, it's uh, actually an email received that has a public comment regarding 96 Street Park. We forwarded to all the members of the commission. Would you like us to read it into the record as well? Please. This email is from Ashley Litwin. She states, I live on Bay across the street from the 96th Street Park. We picked our house because it is across the street from the park and there is no entrance to our street on 96. So we thought it would be safe for our children to learn to ride bike and play in the yard. It has been wonderful. Currently during football slash soccer times, it is packed with cars and difficult to park when I get home from work. It is also dangerous for kids crossing the street with so much traffic, but it is manageable. If the commission closes Byron, sorry, wrong email. So it's it, we thought it was related yeah, to that. Say this is yeah. about closing the street because the title yeah. is 96 Street Park. Oh, okay. My apologies. Any others? Ashley, actually, Ashley uh, wants to speak. Ashley, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Yes, hi, my name is Ashley Litwin. I live at 9565 Bay. Um, the email was obviously regarding the closing of Byron, but I think it's the same issue. Right, as Andrew Craven spoke about, um, currently we are very, very crowded when there is football and, and soccer. Um, we also want a kayak launch or a paddleboard launch. That's something that my husband uses all the time. Um, but anything that needs to be done, we just are worried about having too many people here where you can't park at all. Um, we have little children, personally. We see people speed through here all of the time in the morning. Um, and you see little kids wander out of the park during the day all the time away from their nannies or their parents. The last thing we want is people that aren't from our neighborhood coming in. Um, I think that there will be accidents, something I'm really worried about. Um, and then also the discussion of a, a bigger building on our, block, on our park where we would have something like uh, the community center is very nerve wracking for us also. The last thing we want is so many people, again, congregating around this area. There's just not the space. So I think if we're gonna do any of this stuff, we would have to close off Bay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? No, Mayor, that's it. Okay, then we'll close the public portion of that discussion. And I guess we will, anybody else wanna go? We'll go for one minute now around the bend and then we'll, uh... okay, yeah, Eliana. One minute. One minute. Okay. Um, I think that, um, you know, George Kousis is right. I think that we, what we're doing here is we're approving the, the working with this designer for the park. Um, I think that the designers are going to get their input from the parks and rec and from all of that. It's not for 
it's not for the five of us to put our personal vision into that park. It's for the, um, the work that's been done for 10 years of planning for this. This is not something that we just, you know, and, and I do think we have to thank Commissioner Karukin from the prior commission who had the money set aside for this park. And the reason why we set aside that money was exactly for the additional of building. And to allay Ashley's um, fears, we're not talking about putting a big building there. We're talking about at approximately the same size of the current covered area would just be enclosed. And so that there was a safe place to be inside for programming when the weather outside is bad, or you could run inside and outside programming at the same time. So it would not create an additional programming area. It would not draw additional traffic. It would just be Thank to support you, Commissioner. Who's, who would like to go next? I'll go next, sir. Thank you, Charles. Go ahead and then uh, Vice Mayor. You know, when we hear from members of the community, the residents, um, this we heard from Andrew, David, Mandiff, um, Sam, Ashley, um, you know, I'm so proud to serve this community, I'll tell you, um, because you guys are all so smart. You know, there may be like a shiny object of the moment that gets people nervous, that happens. Um, but, um, you know, what, what I'm drawn to see is, you know, this town having more open spaces, more evenly distributed, such as something on the south part of town around 88th. Um, but ultimately, we are not going to be able to, su to support parking, not with a parking fund, not with uh, magical spots appearing on the street when we want to have walkability, we want to have bikeability. Kind of the, the best thing that I heard was that there's a lot of people walking to their kids to school in the morning. I love that. Um, so I look forward to working with everybody towards a future of Surfside that does not embrace cars. Thank you, Charles. Tina? Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, the purpose of the kayak survey is to find out where people want it. It's There's a lot of not in my backyard going on, which I do understand. And I am not, that's why I want the residents to decide where they want this. I am not making that decision. I don't think we should. I think we need all the input we can get. Um, that aside, I'm, I'm ready to move this forward to hire this design firm. I just would like to remove um, the sections where it has the kayak uh, additional services added in because I think it's premature until we know more of where we want to go with this. So uh, I, I have it all marked off on my on the reso. I can either provi I provided some of it to Lily this afternoon, but I can read it publicly or you know however you want to do it. Thank you, uh, <coughs> Nelly. Uh, yes, um, I just um, wanted to say I, I I do agree with a lot of the residents that having the kayak launch at the 96th Street Park might not be the greatest idea. I love the idea of buying the lot on 88th Street. That to me would be fabulous. The waterway there is beautiful, it's wide, and it goes into other areas that you can explore in your kayaks and stuff. It's a, it's a, it's a I think to me, it's a, a better option. Um, I just wanted to also set the record straight this commission is the one who set aside the money for the 96th Street Park, not the previous commission. And we did that at the beginning when we became the commission. So I just like to make sure that that's into the record and that it's set straight. Um, and uh, I think that's about it. I am ready to vote. I agree with Tina's um, suggestion of taking out the $39, um, the 39,000 um, kayak launch assessment. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Lily. Question for you um, and the manager. Um, with respect to all the ins and outs of this contract, what exactly are the general obligations for these consultants um, with respect to providing concept, conceptual designs for the Parks and Recreation and the Commission? Well, I think that Jason is the best equipped to answer. But in the scope of services, which is exhibit B to the agreement, there is a process laid out for the design. And I believe um, section 2.8 has the final conceptual design review and consideration and approval by the town commission. But along the way, there's um, different what are the steps. Provisions, what are the provisions for additional designs? For instance, if the concept, if they design something that the commission just absolutely hates, Jason, Lily. Uh, yeah, yes, if, if I can, uh, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners, uh, thank you. 
Uh, yes, there is, um, as listed out in, in phase two schematic design of the scope of services, it does include uh, alternative analysis uh, design. They'll be going through community workshops um, and they'll be going through the commission, Parks and Rec Committee. So this will be an iterative design process as they go through that involve multiple different alternatives. It, and, yep. and there'll be multiple stages at which all the different parties will have the ability to put their input. That's and great. The and, the day, and so there will, there will be um, periodic presentations to the commission and the planning and zoning, or I'm sorry, the Parks and Rec while we go through this process? Correct. They'll, they'll, you okay, guys so will be I, and I'm relying, I'm relying on you because you read contracts a lot better than I do. Yeah, if I may, I think, Jason, the way that I'm reading Exhibit B is the final uh, concept comes to the commission, but not the process along the way. Is that correct? Looking at here, there's the Parks and Rec Committee. There is multiple community workshops, which, of course, I know the commission will uh, be part of. And I do see that, you know, just looking at really quick here. Yeah, I, it looks like the final conceptual design comes to the commission. That's that like definitely. task 2.8, but not the prior phases of design. Okay, well, we need, we need to make sure that uh, we're not presented with a fait accompli, okay? So the commission needs to be able to see progress as it's going forward. So how do we, how do we fix that? If I can ask, I believe um, Barry Miller with Savon Miller, uh, the design firm, I believe is on. Jose, can you promote him? And, and we could just hear it right from the horse's mouth. Let me let me also, hold on a second before he comes on. Uh, Vice Mayor, you had your hand up. Did you wanna add something? Yes, I had read the, I had read the whole uh, exhibit A and B. And um, there's multiple, like um, Jason said, there's multiple opportunities. They're both correct. Jason said there's multiple opportunities for uh, public input. And Lily is correct, the final comes to the commission, but we have the right to participate in the workshops and the public input and the P&Z and all those meetings where they present, they're going to present three ideas. And then uh, the two best ones would be selected, I believe. But yeah, they, they can tell you that. But as far as what I read in the contract, um, the final one comes to us, but if we participate in the other uh, meetings, we would see the three designs. Well, I certainly think that there ought to be a provision for those three designs once they get them together to at least come to the commission so that the commission can provide some direction back to the planning or the parks and rec board to, uh, to tweak it to get a final version. So I think that's kind of what's missing here. But let's hear from the, uh, the, uh, the firm. Do we have them on the call? Yes, okay. I believe it's Barry is probably under the name Adriana Savino Miller. Can you all hear me now? Yep. Yes. Well, we almost. Yeah, he's there. He's muted. Is it Kelly? Yes. Okay. I think we just have to get him unmuted. I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, welcome. Hold on one second, we have to turn off something else here. Okay. okay. Uh, did you hear anything I said before? Nope. Okay, The uh, well, uh, thank you for um, for uh, bringing this to uh, to the table tonight. Uh, we've we've uh, been, in, I guess, on three or four different commission meetings uh, with this in the, during this process. So we've kind of learned a little bit about about how you all uh, interact. So the, the one thing I want to make sure that you all understand is that we uh, are very experienced in, in park design and, and and also community outreach and in uh, incorporating a, a alternative design process. So there will be no surprises along the way. You're going to see uh, our best uh, creative efforts at, at bringing uh, design solutions that are pragmatic, functional, and beautiful uh, for, for the city of Surfside, um, town of Surfside, excuse me. Thank so um, the way the way it uh, it usually works is the reason why we put the one commission meeting at the end is we usually don't want to take up too much commission meeting time for things that are going to go back to the public again, back and forth. So 
we, we found the best process is go through the community workshop process. We present, uh, I think we have three alternatives, uh, which we've already as part of the RFQ process, RFP process have started to engage in already uh, in terms of building location and, and types and the kayaks, et cetera. Uh, so, uh, or no kayak, or no kayak, <laughs> of course. So, we so, uh, we're very, very flexible, and uh, we're, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of uh, got a tough hide around us. We, we were the consultants that worked uh, on the Surfside Community Center as well. We were the landscape architects and did the pool designs and all that, which was quite a sure <laughs> the mayor will remember that. Uh, that was quite an iterative uh, uh, back and forth process. Uh, well, now I feel sometimes. better, Kelly. Um, <laughs> so, what are you guys doing about- can't hear uh, you, Mayor. What, what are you doing about sea level rise in the park? Is that incorporated into our design? I can't hear. Now, how do I hear? Can't, can't hear me? Hello? Kelly, we can hear you. I can't hear. Kelly, are you there? Hey, you cannot hear. I and can't he hear people. So good. He was doing so well. Kelly? I'm, if, if, I'm sorry, uh, Mayor, Mr. Mayor, if, the mayor, if Barry can't hear you, I, hear I could just state that yes, yes there is a consultant specifically incorporated in this to incorporate uh, resilient design uh, in the park, both for sea level rise and just general resiliency. Okay. Good, uh, because we want to be resilient oh. and uh, we want to be sustainable. Okay, good. Anybody else have any questions? I think we're ready to call the question then. Okay, we're gonna go around for another minute. Is that right? We cannot hear. Quick question. Can't hear. Need a minute. Somebody muted. Tell team that somebody muted. Kelly, we can we can hear you. Um, stand can by. Can someone I'm hear see us? If, yeah, we, can't we can hear you. I, I'm gonna see if the other somebody, commissioners have. Somebody muted have any, you guys. Have have any comments for you? Okay, here we go. Um, Eliana, you can go first. One I, minute. I, I, I know we're gonna be voting on this. Right. We gotta mute themselves. Kelly, can you mute yourself, please? You guys, Jose, can okay. Um, you wanna start the clock again there, Jose, please? The timer, thank you, okay. Um, I just wanna be clear when we're voting that we're voting on moving forward, taking out the part about the $39,000 kayak thing. So I just that want- was That was the motion. Great, I just, I'm clarifying that so that when I vote on it, I don't go, wait, I wanna clarify. So that's fine because we can always hash this out later on, but I'm comfortable moving forward with this. And I'm very excited that we can do this for our residents and um, I'm happy to be part of this. And I do agree with Commissioner Velasquez that getting that land on 88th Street sounds like a great idea. I'd like to you know, put that on the agenda and move that forward next time. Let's not waste time. Let's leave this town really a better place than when we came in office. Give them a gift and more parks and rec space is a gift that they'll have forever. And you know what, land, you can always sell it later if it, you know, but in the meantime, it would really, it would make um, everyone's life, quality of life dramatically improved. Thanks. Nelly. Yes, I agree. We definitely, Andy, please work on that. We need to get this piece of land. Can't go to somebody else. And no, we will not be selling it, Eliana. It's gonna stay for our town forever. Um, I just wanna make sure that you know, the commission does have input on what's going to happen at our park. I want it to be an amazing park. I want it to have so many beautiful things for our children and all our community. Um, so that's just my main concern that we do have input during the whole process um, because it is for our community and um, it's very important. I, uh, that's one of the reasons why I ran for commission. I wanna make sure that our park is amazing. We deserve this. Our park is old and dated and it needs an uplift. It needs um, beautiful equipment for our children and uh, thing, activities for everyone. Thank you. Okay, anybody else, Tina? Uh, yes, thank you. I, I just wanna set the record straight because um, Commissioner Salzhauer was correct. Uh, Commissioner Kurukin and the previous commission spearheaded this. There was a five-year capital plan There, so I want that to be clear. Okay, we could not be doing this without the funding. Okay, anybody else? Charles? 
Uh, thank you, sir. Um, with a lot of these big picture issues, I've gone back to the charrette, um, which was a great big picture um, idea generating think tank um, of, of a number of documents. Um, but as we can look to this, look back to the charrette, which still applies, and as we go forward with zoning code that hopefully everyone will see, um, you know, and agree upon, promotes a better Surfside for the future. Um, what we really are talking about is a master plan. A lot of these issues about walkability, bikeability, the level to which parking and cars are or aren't supported. Um, that's part of our master plan. And I'd like to take a look at that because um, that will guide us um, in terms of big picture. That said, um, the, uh, the firm we're hiring tonight just did a great introduction. So um, let's call the vote. All right, uh, anybody else? Um, yes, Mayor, if I could just ask for clarification. Is okay. the motion to delete all references in the resolution and in the attachments, specifically attachment B to exhibit B, which references the kayak assessment? Yes. Yes. Um, if, if I may, Mayor, I, I can provide the areas where, where it's mentioned. I can, I can provide that to the attorney. Well, that'll be fine. We're just doing a general motion here. You're saying it's removed, so we're removing it. Um, Madam Clerk, would you go ahead and call the question, please? Yes, Mayor. Commissioner Castle? Yes. Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Commissioner Salazar? Yes. Vice Mayor Paul? Yes. Mayor Briquette? Yes. Mayor, the motion carries. Okay, I think we're up to good and welfare now. Um, do we have any speakers for good and welfare? Okay, who's the first speaker? First speaker is Joshua Epstein. Please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Joshua Epstein, 9317 Bay Drive. I wanted to touch on a couple of topics briefly with the first one being the, the food giveaway that we did for our residents a couple, I believe it was three months ago. I think that was a great program that we did and I would be in favor in continuing doing that for the next couple of months until the impacts of COVID are severely mitigated. The second thing I wanted to touch on was our non-enforcement, like um, our non-existent enforcement of our mask mandate. We have a crisis on our hands. We literally had less than 100 COVID cases in the first five months of this pandemic. We added more than 100 COVID cases in just the last month alone. I hate to point any fingers, but this commission meeting, um, Vice Mayor Paul, Commissioner Salazar, and Commissioner Kessel voted to have enforcement. Without any enforcement, that mask mandate that was put forward means absolutely nothing. We might as well have given everybody a post-it note that said, please wear a mask. We need enforcement in the downtown business district, and we currently have none. And I hate to be a conspiracy theorist, but the, the person controlling the town, uh, the police chief's paycheck is the mayor, who has said many times, pushed conspiracy theories, said the CDC is outplaying the cases, the media is making up case numbers, making up deaths. And, and he earlier said that the election was, he thinks, stolen from Donald Trump or something along those lines. I mean, he's clearly out of touch with reality, which is something which is obviously a problem on its own. But when you add that into our residents getting sick, that becomes too much. I would like to hear from whoever, if we can, whoever, I mean, during COVID, whoever's in charge of that enforcement, making sure that it happens, because it's not happening. We have two blocks of downtown area. We talk about wanting to help our small businesses, and we must, but nobody's going to get toys there. Nobody's going to get a paleta when it's, when it's playing Russian, Russian roulette with their life just trying to go get some ice cream for their kids. I mean, I know personally, I used to go there all the time. I barely go there anymore. And when I do go there, we've created a new walkway in the middle of the street to avoid all the people on the sidewalks not wearing masks. You can't even get through there. And especially now with the main people there not wearing masks are tourists. The main thing keeping people wearing masks was not themselves getting sick because they wanted to play Russian roulette with their own life. But it's the tourists coming down here, don't have any family down here, don't have any elderly family down here. So they're not worried about infecting other people. Those are the people that are not wearing masks. And we're seeing a lot of those people. While it gets colder up north, we're going to see more and more tourists come down. So if our police department needs more money for protective equipment for their police officers to go out and enforce it, then so be that. Let's give them that extra money. If they need more officers, if they need extended hours, if they need more code enforcement, so be it. But when we have over 100 residents becoming sick over the past month because of something that is on our hands, I know personally uh, my, my uh, grandmother's friend who lives in Surfside barely leaves the house probably contracted COVID just walking down Harding. It is a mass spreader event, Harding Avenue, and we must have enforcement. Our police must be held responsible to enforcement, to enforce it. This commission said they wanted enforced. 
So our police should enforce it. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Jeff Rose. Jeff, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Jeff Rose, 8851 Froud Avenue. I just want to give a big shout out and thank you to Public Works, Randy and Hector, for the amazing job they did on the 92nd Street Ed, along with the path next to the community center. Basically, it's a walkable biking path now, ADA compliant path. Not only does it look good, but it really saved the town a lot of money doing it in-house. So I think we should all be really thankful and appreciative of all the good hard work all the Public Works guys do. Thank you. Next speaker. Next speaker is Andrew Craven. Andrew, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Uh, Andrew Craven, 9573 Bay Drive. Uh, just want to reiterate what which came up earlier, the issue that came up earlier, but particularly with respect to the closure of Byron and the effect it'll have on Bay Drive. And uh, just uh, request that you certainly consider that as that topic comes up later this evening, if it gets there. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is George Kuslas. George, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. George Kuslas, 9225 Collins Avenue. I wanted to pick up where Commissioner Kessel left off. What, what he said was really quite on the mark, and I don't want it to evaporate. Uh, one, the, um, the charrette was a great document from uh, over a dozen years ago, actually under your uh, tenure the last time. Like any charrette, it's a brainstorming session. It, it ha contains ideas, some that are outlandish and will never happen, but other ones are the kernels of some great things that could happen. Um, but what wasn't there was kind of a bridge document that basically takes things that can happen in five years or 10 years or 20. And so, which brings me to uh, the second part of Commissioner Kessel's comment, which is that a master plan and all too often I've found in at least smaller communities in Florida, plan is a noun. It's a diagram and you pull it off the shelf and it really doesn't change. And a lot of other places, plan is a verb. You try to anticipate uh, the future, what it might be, what you don't want it to be, what you would like it to be, all these things. And it's the perfect bridge document from the uh, charrette. The, the, and it, it basically becomes a, a capital improvements plan when you talk about walkability, for instance. You may not be able to do it all, but you begin to think about what that might look like and what are the first things you try to accomplish now and how does it spread? And, uh, you know, before you know it, in a decade, you have a fantastic system in place in the town of walkability. So anyway, I just wanted to echo his comments. Thank you. Thank you, George. Next speaker. Next speaker is Moshe Bainan. Moshe, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Hi, this is Moshe Bonin, 516 Surfside Boulevard, 91st Street. Um, I just also want to echo what Charles said, because we talk about having a plan and, you know, I turn around and I don't call into the meeting one week and next thing you know, they're talking about closing Byron. And, and there's obviously a lot of implications. And so I know there's every, every member ran because they had a vision. I think the vision for the town is, is the holistic picture, and then there should be a thought process of how you get there and what the impact is. And lately it feels, whether it's construction, whether it's Byron, whether, you know, with, with uh, the park, which I, yeah, obviously I want a park, obviously I want a kayak launch. And even with that, you know, I heard people just speak now from uh, 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 the block near the park and, and talk about the implications it might be for them. So I think it's really important that we have a plan. We understand the implications of any decision there's outreach to do that it shouldn't be the it, it should be whoever's running the project because i think everyone is going to have their inherent bias of what they want i would too um and, and i really think that's important because uh you know i sometimes i'm scared to wake up and hear the chat about the meeting to see what i missed so thank you very much thank you next speaker please next speaker it's steve shot please say your name and address for the record and your comment Steve, Steve your microphone is muted. Can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Thank you, Stephen Schott, 9101 Collins Avenue. Uh, thank you for the commission, the mayor, for everything you do. Seen great progress over the last year. Uh, looking forward to more in 2021. Just from a point of view, want to strongly support the idea of the closure of the, of the, the roads 
Uh, I believe, you know, obviously not, there, it will affect individual people in different ways. And some will believe as, as it was pointed out earlier, not in my backyard, but at the end of the day, for the whole part of Surfside, for all of Surfside, I think this is good. It will not only create more and better property values, but but even more importantly, from the enjoyment point of view of a walkability and of a safe neighborhood, I think this is a major step forward. It's not coincidental that Bell Harbor enjoys such wonderful things as a higher value because of this, the nature of these decisions. Thank you very much, and thanks for all that you do. Thank you, Steve. Next speaker, please. Uh, Mayor, I only have one public speaker that already spoke. I don't know if you would like him to speak again. No, um, we're going to, everybody's going to get one turn and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll continue on. Okay, I'm going to close the public portion more, of the meeting. One more. Minute. I'm sorry, okay. Susan Falcon, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Hi, Suzanne Falcon, uh, 9549 Bay Drive. And I just first thank you all for all the work you do. I, I'm sure to a large extent it feels thankless. So thank you. Uh, we, we all appreciate it, even though it's, um, I, I know there can be bickering and infighting and it's challenging, but first and foremost. Um, obviously I live on Bay Drive across from the park and I know there's a lot of chatter about everything going on there. So I just wanted to chime in and say, um, I would appreciate if there would just be perhaps some discussion or something that could be opened up to the community to review, like everyone's saying, the larger picture and how it'll affect the town on the whole. And I would like to reiterate what some people are saying is that as a as somebody who lives on this street across from the park, it's really worrisome, the, the traffic that goes in both directions, despite it being a one way and the amount of children coming and going from school every day. So any decisions that are made, I'm just, you know, highly concerned about something terrible happening. So I just, I, that's my main concern, first and foremost. Everything else, I think as a community, we can figure it out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Okay, is that uh, anybody else, uh, Madam Clerk? No, Mayor. Okay, now remind me, what was our rule for after good and welfare this meeting? Was it the everybody gets one minute or everybody gets three minutes or how are we gonna do it? It's everybody gets a chance to respond back. That's, I don't okay, so everybody gets three minutes at the end. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, who would like to start? Go ahead, Eliana. Um, I wanna thank everyone for their comments. Um, I, I do want to say that I think a lot of the things that we tackle at these meetings are important. And yes, it is a thankless job. Actually worse than that. It's like consuming. Um, anyway, I do think that what, I, what the problem that I'm having sometimes with these meetings, and this speaks to, I think, to the last speaker, is that these items are just, they're sort of being, they're coming out of nowhere. Like, for example, the Byron street closure. That's something that I think that, yes, we talked about, you know, people have talked about it for a long time, but I think that that the way that things need to be addressed is it needs to first be an agenda item where we talk about it, where we let the public know in a, ahead of time in advance that we're going to be talking about it. If it's an item that's going to generate a lot of attention, it should be a separate workshop of some sort. Um, we should have open meetings like that for the public discuss it at the commission and then work towards a resolution. What I don't like is sort of this fast tracking or shoving onto the agenda of resolutions ready to go that are sort of special interest or just one point. It's a, it feels like a way to get, a, get to the front of the line on the agenda. And that's what I don't think should be happening. I think that's what residents have a problem with is that they feel like they're not part of the process. And we were elected not to implement our own personal vision. We were elected to serve the residents. And so we first need to hear what the residents think on a particular issue. So, you know, for example, we put the undergrounding of the power lines on the ballot. That was great. We heard what they wanted and now we're moving towards that. If we want to close the town to traffic, that is something that's going to impact every resident's quality of life every day, how they take their kid to school, how they get to work, how they get home from school. That is a big ticket item. That's an item that should be that should be on the ballot. That's an item that residents should vote on because it's not for us, you know, for five of us to decide, hey, because we felt a certain way on a Thursday or a Tuesday in January, they now have to spend 
45 minutes to get their kid to school in the morning, or maybe that it, maybe the sacrifice is worth it because then this is like Shangri-La and it's great and we can play in the streets and we don't have to worry about cars. And maybe they feel that way. But I do think we need to do a better job of putting items in the proper order. So first put it on the agenda as a discussion item. Let's have, you know, let's include the community, let them know ahead of time, then move forward with, you know, a resolution. But I, I think we each have to not just, and I'm, and I'm talking in particular to, you know, some people that tend to do this, but you don't just put something on the agenda as a resolution so that you can jump through the, the line of discussion items, because there's some great discussion items on here that we're not gonna get to probably in our entire term because of this. I mean. That our agenda is so long and there's some great things that, you know, Commissioner Kessel has on there, that Velasco's on here, that Taya Paul, that I have on here, that we I haven't been getting to in months. And I'm like the second item and we still haven't gotten to me since October. So it's a joke. We, we have to do a better job of including- Thank the you, community. Commissioner. Who's next? Charles, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you to everyone tonight uh, with the Good and Welfare session. Um, I found it incredibly, um, productive and informative and uh, in the spirit of team building and moving forward towards a better Surfside um, for this upcoming year and for decades to come. Um, and that's why I'm here. That's why we're all here. Um, everyone deeply cares on this commission. That's obvious. Sometimes there are there, there are issues that we differ on and sometimes there's, there's some bickering that it probably isn't necessary. But um, you know the, the issues that were touched upon from thanking Randy and the Parks Department, or I'm sorry, and the um, the um, Public Works Department, um, to you know um, appreciation for meeting the food need and um, enforcement of mandates to keep people safe from COVID, um, to you know the Bay Drive concerns of the residents that live there, um, you know it, that is a um, a park with children and babies, um, you know, in attendance and possibly running into the street. You know, I expect everyone in this community to hold me accountable to any vote that I have on putting that park at risk and that location at risk. Um, that said, I don't necessarily understand why everyone thinks there's going to be a sudden burst of traffic heading north or heading east onto, um, onto 96th Street, but I'm open-minded, I can be educated. The traffic studies will need to come to actually sway me one way or the other. Um, and, I, and I don't want people to get unnecessarily upset, especially when there's enough to be upset about or concerned about already. I hope no one's upset really by anything that transpires because life brings challenges certainly. Um, but things that are unnecessary to worry about um, I hope everybody to take a deep breath on, you know, we are doing our best. We're not perfect. I see big improvement with this commission, with the town, with the way that we've approached projects, um, with getting multiple bids, even when they're not required and, um, and bringing sunshine to this town. And, um, and I'm glad to see it in the responses that tonight for also from Andrew and George and um, the contributions of Moshi and Steve Schott and um, uh, Ms. Falcon. Um, all very constructive and, um, and non-judgmental, even when it's your own backyard. You know, we all know NIMBY and that does affect us. Um, so I'm not judgmental about that either. I just listen and hope and pray to do my best. Thanks. Thanks, Charles. Next speaker. No, nobody, Tina. Uh, thank you. And thank you to all the speakers. Um, I really do appreciate your input because uh, it's important for us to know and uh, and work on uh, these issues. We're all in, in this together. Uh, I'd like to address uh, the mask enforcement. I noticed too that um, a lot of tourists are walking around without masks. I would like us to, to do something, you know, handing out masks, education, more signage. I'm not sure what we need to do, but let's 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 work on that. Maybe we need the hotels to explain to their guests that they need to wear masks when they're in public. Um, maybe they're coming here for that freedom of not having to do that because they're coming from more restricted areas. Um, you know, I'm all for people enjoying our town, but but be respectful, please. Uh, aside from that, uh, the traffic issues are very real and they're just and they're not just on Bay and Byron. I received an email this week that was quite disturbing. I've been working with our town staff on it. Um, we had a woman who was in the crosswalk on Harding Avenue and 89th Street and she's 
she's pregnant and she was hit by a car. Thankfully, she's all right. But it, it's still not not a good thing to happen to somebody. Uh, so uh, I'm working to get our the crosswalks we were promised by FDOT put in place and also fix the ones that we have because they don't have adequate lighting. So there's no mechanism for the cars to stop. It was like, like two cars stopped and one didn't and they hit her. And um, I think that uh, moving forward, we need to fix the traffic issues. They have become more uh, congested. being more walkable and, and we have more pedestrians on the streets and, and we need to take care in that. Thank you, Tina. Uh, Nelly. Nelly, we can't hear you. Can't hear you, Nelly. Okay, why don't you try resetting your microphone? Hello? Okay, there you go. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. yeah thank you. I, I first Stop playing to... with your computer. Just <laughs> leave it alone. It. I don't know what's going on. What are you doing? <laughs> well, anyway, um, I wanted to thank all our residents that spoke here tonight and that participate in our meetings every uh, month now. Um, I agree there's a lot of comments that were very important um, regarding the park and um, all the other items that are on the agenda tonight. Um, and I do see the vision that our residents have and have been asking for. Um, in terms of the things that, the, the way that we put things on the agenda, I mean, these are things that we heard from our residents, specifically during the time that we were campaigning. And I agree that there's a lot of traffic problems in our town. I not only want to close Byron Avenue, I also want to close Bay Drive. I think we should close our entire town, to be honest with you have um, a gated community, like someone mentioned, like Ball Harbor. Um, it, it would be very um, good for our town. Um, in terms of our not being able to move forward with our agenda, a lot of it also gets stuck in, for example, our COVID task force takes an enormous amount of time. And example, what happened in our last meeting, we were on this task force for more than an hour and these are the reasons why our agenda doesn't move forward because we get stuck on this COVID task force and we, move, and we don't move forward and we had to extend our meeting several times to get to the items that Tina had um, suggested to move forward at the beginning of the meeting. This is something that needs to be looked into as people know what's going on. People see the news, people watch the, the items on the internet, people get the messages on the internet, people see our website, people get the newspaper. I mean, it's all over the place. It's not something that's just happening here in Surfside. It's something that's happening worldwide. So I think that we owe it to our residents to be able to get things moved forward instead of getting stuck on getting an update of something that we already see on the news, we already see in the internet, we already get emails, we already see it on our website, we have signs all over the place. Um, so I, I please, I, 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 we need to get through the items that are important for our residents. We need to get through walkability. Look at this that Tina just spoke about with the lady that got hit by a car. These are things that are important. We need to, we need to make sure that traffic is taken care of. There needs to be more officers out there giving out tickets, making sure that people are not um, speeding through our town. Because yes, it is not just inside our town. It's on Harding Avenue, it's on Collins Avenue. Even when we were campaigning, there was a couple that were crossing the street that you were there, Tina, and the mayor was there. And they, they almost got hit by a car right in front of us. We're standing right there. It's been happening. We need to stop all this speeding. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to address, I think the, uh, the gentleman that his wife was hit by the car is named Max Spielberg. And what I did was Max, Max makes some good points and he's had, he's got some great suggestions. And I've had, uh, I sent a letter to uh, our clerk and I had her put this very issue on the uh, agenda because it dovetails perfectly with what I've been trying to do all along, you know, uh, the chief at uh, 
and with the manager's help at the time, uh, had uh, gone ahead and created our own special traffic detail, which I had asked be done, and it was done, um, or suggested that it be done. And now we have, you know, traffic detail out there, slowing traffic down. And I think that it's pretty evident that it's working. I think people are absolutely driving slower, and uh, but not slow enough. And I think we do need uh, to talk about uh, traffic calming on those two streets. And I'm looking forward to doing that at the next meeting. Yes, the uh, the comments about the, the Byron Avenue closure appearing out of nowhere are false. Um, that item was put on the agenda. It was advertised. It was discussed. It was voted on. We heard comments from callers. And it's, it's not true that uh, we're just putting things on and trying to slip them by. Those, those complaints seem to be, uh, they seem to be generated when, when some people don't like something, all of a sudden they say there's not enough community input, but when they want something, uh, we need to do it quickly and get it done. So listen, the fact of the matter is, is that it was on the agenda, everything is front and center uh, we're going to talk about, uh, I had put that on the agenda, and I'm excited that the commission voted, um, with the exception of one commissioner, to put it forward. I'm also excited to see if we can get the Bay Drive thing um, taken care of, too, because both of those streets, as as Nelly said, and I think some others had talked about, um, really need to be addressed. Uh, it's a safety issue. Uh, the kids coming out of that park. I don't see cars going into that street anymore in the future, except for the people that live there, quite frankly. I also see uh, us going to electric vehicles in the town. I see golf carts uh, uh, being used more often. I see kids walking to those parks and I see a whole different sea change in that area. But, you know, having cars go through there is a bad idea. I agree with a lot of people that have said that, listen, if you have one only one street left where people can get out. They're probably going to tend to go in that direction, which is why we need to address Byron Avenue tonight. Uh, it's the next item on the agenda, and we will take that up right now. Thank you. Okay. I think that everybody's had their chance to talk, and we will move on to item 5B, which is street closure, Bay Drive at 96th Street. Uh, uh, Sandra, would you please uh, read that out? Yes, Mayor. A resolution of the Mayor and the Town Commission of the Town of Clearside, Florida in support of closing Bay Drive at 96th Street and or other traffic mitigation measures, directing the Town Administration to commence the process of closing Bay Drive at 96th Street and or other traffic mitigation measures, including application to and working with Miami-Dade County for such closure and or traffic mitigation measures, providing for implementation, providing for transmittal to Miami-Dade County, and providing for an effective date, item 5B. Thank you very much. Uh, who would like to go first? Eliana, go ahead. Um, so I have to uh, make a state. I, I spoke with the attorney today and I'm going to, I have to recuse myself on this discussion and vote because I live at 9317 Bay, but she told me that I could make a statement and then I'm going to um, log off for this conversation. But I want to ask a question before you make your statement, because I wouldn't want you to do anything that would get you in trouble. She already said I um, could. I've already reviewed it with her. But thanks. That, wait a minute. Nice. I was able to make a statement. When Madam I... Attorney, was was Nellie able to make a statement? No, was I was she not. Was, uh, not allowed to talk. No. Uh, actually, my recollection is that Nellie did speak and then recused herself, um, and we can no. check the record on that. But that's my recollection. Okay. Well, let me ask you a question. It's all right. Uh, it's all right. I thought I really thought that Nellie should have never had to recuse herself. And frankly, I don't think that Eliana should have to recuse herself because this is not an issue that benefits her necessarily. It benefits the whole town. But go ahead, Eliana, make your statement. OK, I, I agree with the ethics uh, decision. As long as it's currently saying that I need to recuse myself, I'm going to respect that because any change in track pattern on my block would impact the value of my home and then would bring uh, financial benefit or detriment to myself. So the comment that I want to make is is basically that I feel um, that at the last meeting I voted against the closure of Byron for the sole reason of the fact that it did not include Bay Drive in it because I did not feel comfortable 
creating, knowingly creating a problem. It's not that I opposed closing Byron. And so when the mayor tries to mischaracterize my vote in the Gazette and in general, uh, that is not what happened. I feel very strongly that it needed to include Bay Drive from the get-go so we don't have to create a problem. I think that the right remedy for the mistake that happened at the last meeting is reconsideration, where you agree to reconsider last month's vote and then add the Bay Drive in it so the two are joined together forever because there's not this this vote right now on Bay Drive doesn't have any teeth because there will never be sufficient traffic studies right now to support closing Bay on its own. So although this might make you feel better that you're voting for this and so you're not um, hurting people who live on Bay, residents understand and residents need to know that this in fact is just a gesture. And the only way to truly accomplish this is by joining it with the Byron Avenue closure and having that be one resolution together. So this again is just this is just a show to make it look like, oh, I really feel bad for the people on Bay. But what this, in fact, is doing is knowingly, this is never going to get anywhere because there is no current problem on Bay. You would have to close Byron, then create the problem on Bay, and then have another commission in the future address it with the um, traffic problems and the, you know, hopefully there won't have been any accidents, but likely there will be. So I'm recusing myself now. I hope that uh, somebody considers reconsidering what happened at the last meeting instead and doing this properly and adding Bay Drive to that because that's the way to show that you care about Bay Drive. That's the way to show that you really care about all of the residents of this town and not just the ones on one particular block. Those two together, if you wanted to do that, I also think, like I said, that putting this on the ballot if you wanna close the whole town is an important issue. Um, so I live on Bay, so I can't vote on this. I will leave you to your discussion and to your vote. I hope you just listen to what I said and I hope that residents um, hear what I've said, and that will be reflected in comments. But what I'm telling you is exactly the best way to, to you know, after talking to the lawyers and talking to uh, the manager, et cetera, that it, the best way to move forward is to have it be together. That gives it the most credibility. Thanks. That's it. Okay. Have a good conversation. Okay. Um, uh, commissioners, uh, what's your pleasure? Would you like to hear from the speakers first, or would you like to make a comment first? Tina? Yes, I, I definitely want to hear from the speakers, but I think if we go around once to comment, that might um, help. All right. Some of the concerns. All right. Well, you go first then. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, first of all, I'm okay. You know, the reason I wanted to keep Byron separate was because on the previous commission, we tried to close Byron and it was added, it was lumped in with something else. And so we never got a, a straight answer. I'm fine to uh, rescind Byron and, and do a new reso that combines both. I think that also, um, you know, I spoke with Lily about this at length this afternoon. There's a program called Slow Streets that's um, happening around the country and uh, in South Beach on uh, near the Flamingo Park District, they um, just did a pilot program of this in uh, partnership with Miami-Dade County. And I think that that may be something we could look at is um, because I think this whole thing has to be rewritten. So we can go ahead and pass this um, Bay Drive closure if that's what people want. I, I will support it. But I think that, um, you know, Byron had a very specific, uh, you know, it had a whole report. It had, and there's specifics about car counts. And I don't even know if Byron will make the car counts for a f full closure. So I'm not sure where Bay stands. And, and it may be stronger to have them both together. Um, the other thing too is that there are a little bit of things that were left off in this uh, resolution from the Byron one. They're not identical. There were, um, uh, basically it's the same thing, but it's a section that um, refers to, uh, sorry, the county's traffic flow modification street closure procedures. And that's left off in about uh, three parts. So I just wonder why this resolution is different from the Byron one. Um, but that, that's about it. I'm, I'm happy to hear from others. Thank you, Charles. Um, yeah, and I'm glad to just sum up where I am on this issue. Um, you know, listening to Commissioner Salzhauer and now the Vice Mayor Paul, um, and you know, you, Mr. Mayor, and for that matter, Commissioner Velasquez too. Um, it's a matter of approach. We all want safety first. Um, how my thought process process is is I am very open minded. Um, I'm very willing to see results in a traffic study for how how any any one thing impacts another. 
Um, clearly, anything we do related to traffic is going to be impacting all sorts of different outlets. Um, you know, there could be the 88th Street contingency that wants to close the outlet onto Byron. Um, we heard from them last meeting, not this meeting. Uh, but in summary, the clear and present danger for me is Byron. Um, this is where there's a traffic circle that was never meant to be a traffic circle, he dealing with heavy traffic. And um, re in spite of police presence there, the drivers still don't stop and the pedestrians can't cross the street safely. I see that every day. There's a clear and present danger. Um, I don't see that on Bay. And um, knowing that traffic patterns and how I choose my traffic and my path in, in and out of town, it's based on kind of uh, path of least resistance and where I'm going. And Bay I could leave from, but I never do because why would I want to head east on 96th to then go north or south on Collins or Hardy? It's more, it's longer, it takes too long. So I, I tend to think the traffic down there is because of the park and people driving to the park when maybe they don't need to drive. But that's my perception and my perception can be wrong. Um, so that's why we need traffic studies. But tonight, uh, after careful consideration and also speaking with um, the attorney and others, um, I'm gonna stick with my gut on this and I'm gonna say that the driving clear and present danger should drive this conversation. And, um, and I'm gonna trust in our authorities in the county and the state because I'm quite sure that 96th Street is a state highway too designated, um, although I'm not positive I was gonna look that up before the meeting. That said, let's um, hear from the residents because I'm open-minded and perhaps somebody will convince me to think otherwise. I've changed my vote before, but, um, but um, Byron is where I see an immediate risk and a, and a bad kind of design. Um, the one thing that I wanna say I'm very grateful for that I heard from, well, from many residents this week on this issue, but someone pointed out the, um, the exit of, a, of a, an emergency situation, meaning um, exit to a hospital of an ambulance um, that might uh, lengthen the response time out of the community to a hospital. I value that. That's a very valid concern if we were to close Byron. Um, so, but uh, but bring on the comments and but hopefully keep them in perspective that this isn't our decision anyhow. It's the county's and there's got to be traffic studies because safety's first. Thank you, Nellie. I guess I, I agree that we need to have traffic studies. This is all about doing a traffic study. I don't think you can close the street without even um, having a, a traffic study. I, if we were to close Bay Drive, I'm, I'm very supportive of that as well. I wanna make sure that all our residents um, understand that this is for everyone, um, not just picking Bay, uh, Byron, out of, Byron Avenue out of the hat and saying, oh yeah, let's kind of close that one and forget about the other one. Um, I think this would be a, a very good thing for our town and it would make it more um, private and closed and safer um, for all our children. Um, I would go with whatever it, it is more important for our residents. And I definitely want to hear from as many residents as possible uh, to um, both situations. And if it is that it, it carries more weight to rewrite this, including both streets, then that's, uh, that would be my, 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 uh, uh, this is where I would vote on. And this is what I would support. Um, what's important for me is, is that to make sure that our residents are um, happy with the final decision and that we're not doing this out of just, so oh, we're going to do Byron and forget about Bay because that's not what it is. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, listen, I think that the uh, traffic study idea is important to the extent that uh, we know we can get emergency uh, services in and out uh, of the area uh, quickly and efficiently. Uh, but I don't think we need a traffic study to tell us the people on Byron Avenue have been abused and I don't think we need a traffic study to tell us that the, the kids and the residents at 96th Street in Bay um, have a pretty serious problem with people speeding through there. Um, you know, we need to at some point stop fishing or cut bait, one of the two things. So, or fish and cut bait, I should say. Um, I'm, I'm not comfortable with uh, analyzing this for another six months. If we're required to get a traffic study to get it done, let's get the traffic study to get it done. I think that most people who've experienced the Byron Highway 
and uh, all the cars speeding past Bay Drive uh, know what the answer should be. Uh, I think the issue is, the real issue is, is that uh, there is a legitimate concern about some traffic seeking um, a way to get out of town on the north end um, through Bay Drive. I think that's a legitimate and valid um, concern. And I think that uh, that needs to be addressed. But one of the concerns I have is there is a, uh, there is a, 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 a sentiment that uh, one cannot happen without the other. And I think that that, you know, that creates a challenge too, because if, yeah, I think the county's predisposition is to tell us, you know, I'm sorry, you know, we used to do that, but we can't do that. You know, we did it for Miami Shores. We did it for uh, 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 Bay Harbor. We did it for uh, uh, Keystone. We did it for Coral Gables. But you know what? We kind of don't do that anymore. We're sorry. That that answer, quite frankly, is not going to be good enough for me. And uh, I think that, you know, if we want to get this done, if we want to get our town put in a position where we're going to be safe and where we're going to feel good about what we do, we're going to have to push a little harder. To that end, I have reached out to our county commissioner, Sally Heyman, and I have sent her the documents we have thus far, and I have asked her to please move forward with doing whatever we need to do to get this job done. And she has let me know that she is working on it. Okay. So uh, uh, she's also sort of said that, uh, you know, there's going to be resistance. And I get that. I get that. It's sort of like uh, when you have an insurance claim at your house and your insurance company automatically tells you that's not covered. I think that's the easiest thing for them to say. But I think that if this is something we really want to do, this is going to be a challenge. This is going to be a challenge. There's no doubt about it. But if we want to get it done, uh, we're going to have to push on this. And I think that if we have the residents behind us on this, it's going to be eminently more doable. And I think that uh, that's what we have to find out. So let's hear from the residents. Let's hear what they have to say. And we'll find out, uh, figure out rather, what our next step is. Madam Clerk, would you please call the first person to speak? Yes, Mayor. Joshua Epstein, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Joshua Epstein, 9317 Bay Drive. If there's one thing that's become apparent to me is that residents keep on reaching out again and again to try to make it clear to you guys that if you're really serious about closing Bay Drive, then you, either Mr. Mayor, Commissioner Kessel, or Vice Mayor Paul, must motion to reconsider the motion that was passed last meeting and combine the closures of Bay and Byron. If you don't, then this entire thing is simply a fraud and we will have officially sacrificed Bay for Byron. <coughs> there is nowhere near enough evidence on Bay Drive for it to stand alone. Its closure is directly related to the Byron closure and the foreseeable consequence of, bros of closing Byron, which by the way, the county gives us a very easy way to do that. And that is to combine them together so that they are heard together. And if Byron is accepted, then Bay will be accepted. If they are not sent to the county in a joint resolution, then we are simply not serious about closing Bay Drive, but rather pretending to care in order to appeal to our Bay residents and not, and not face serious backlash. I mean, you might as well write it on a post-it note with a bunch of heart emojis and smiley faces that you want to close Bay if you're going to refuse combining the two because it has a zero fat, 0% zero chance of success. I mean, I know I hear again and again from Byron residents about the cats and iguanas being hit on Bay, but it's going to be cats on Byron and kids on Bay. I personally walked home from school probably almost every day, multiple times a week from Bay Harbor in the eight years that I was there. And I was probably almost run over and hit by a car over 500 times in my just eight years at that school. Bay Drive is the street where all of our kids walk to school, all of the kids come back to school. So if we're talking about walkability, where our third graders, the first time they ever walk to school, that's on Bay. When they ride back, parents will simply not feel safe if Bay is not closed. And the only way to, for Bay to actually be closed is to join it in a resolution. Because you can't go to court and want to arrest somebody without any evidence and then be surprised that they would not arrest them. It's simply just not how it works. And I can tell you, we will have a very serious, we will have blood on our hands, not only that, but we will have a very serious problem that is caused by the making of this commission if you do not combine them. There is simply no possible way that the county accepts Bay Drive. Byron barely has the car count. So what's going to happen is if Byron gets accepted, then Bay Drive, it'll be years before Bay Drive has the car count to be able to also be closed. So we will have created a man-made problem on Bay Drive 
that we will then have to go back to a, uh, a further commission, or like a commission in the future, go back to and then put a Band-Aid on that problem. There's simply, it's, this is not the way to go about it. The way to go about it is to combine them together. And I think that's ought to, have, that ought to be how you do it if you're, not, if you're serious about closing it. Listen, if you're not serious, I'd much rather you just come out and say, I'm not for it than attempting to do this and then say, oh, it didn't pass when there's no evidence, no studies, no anything on Bay Drive. If you combine them, if Byron gets passed, Bay gets passed. So I would, since I would, um, since I would just ask you that you combine them so we have a real chance at getting both of them closed and no kids being hit on Bay Drive. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker, it's um, Andrew Craven. Andrew, please say your name and address for the record and your comment. <clears throat> Andrew Craven, 9573 Bay Drive. Thank you for letting me speak so many times tonight. I'll be brief. Um, first to address Commissioner Kessel. Um, you know, if you, if you have to be on Bay Drive to, to see what happens, but I would guess every fourth car that heads north on Bay Drive takes the illegal left turn to go west. That's just something we see multiple times a day. Many cars just turn uh, right to take the south exit into, or I'm sorry, the north exit into Surfside by illegally turning on our street. I and mean, that's just something we see every day. It just goes on and on and on. That's been happening for the 15 years that I've been here. Um, with regard to, to Byron and Bay and combining the two, you know, I think unfortunately, and I've been a part of this, that there has become kind of an us versus them mentality of Byron and Bay Drive. But, you know, Byron Avenue residents are my neighbors. And, and I, I support closing Byron Avenue as long as Bay is the part of the exact same analysis and the exact same resolution. If that's the case, I think everybody supports everybody that lives in Surfside. If you let one road be closed through one resolution and then wait for us to deal with the accidents and the problems on top of what we're already dealing with, then nobody on Bay Drive is going to support that. It's a very easy solution. Byron gets exactly what it seeks and what it should get, which is closing the road, move to reconsider the resolution that was passed last time, and then move to add uh, Bay Drive into the resolution right now, and the problem is solved, and everybody is happy. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. <laughs> George Kusilas. George, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. George Kusilas, 9225 Collins Avenue. Uh, so I don't have a dog in this fight or a horse in this race or however you want to look at it. So I'm just going to offer uh, some advice and, and echo what you've heard from a couple of the speakers and Commissioner Salsauer that the best resolution moving forward is a combined one. Um, because they need to be combined, but also the, the two streets are different from each other in the, uh, the facts that underlie closing. Each one has scant uh, evidence behind it and the other one is pretty good. So what I would do, and I had circulated a, a version of this, is through a series of additional whereas clauses where you essentially say that the, the, you know, the road network of Surfside is constrained and funneled northbound because of the geometry of the town and that uh, Carlisle has already been closed and any closure of uh, Byron will divert traffic to the remaining open street, which is Bay. And whereas diverting traffic, we know will have uh, a detrimental effect to Bay um, and that the road network that is interrelated, interrelated, so to speak, that you, um, Put all these things together, and through these whereas clauses, you're um, you know you create a a combined uh, resolution where the you, you keep all the whereas clauses you you already had for Byron, and you create these new ones that basically uh, appeal to Bay. Thank you. Thank you, George. Next speaker, please. Next speaker, it's Moshi Bainin. Uh, Moshi, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Hi, thanks for hearing me twice today. Uh, Mo Shabanin, 516 91st Street. So, so just a few points to the mayor I, I, and then the commission. Uh, it, it's unfair to say people argue when they don't get their way. You had a, a, a vote to talk about a kayak launch. And this, yes, it was on an agenda, but not everyone can make every meeting. And yes, I read about it in the letter, but a few points, if you're talking about Bay and if you're talking about Byron, why not going east on Abbott? When you go, when you're going up to Collins, past the mall, everyone makes a right onto Abbott. That is hell. I got hit by a car on 91st Street in Collins while driving my bike. 
If you look at 91st Street, it's a two-way street. There are more cars going up and down that street than Byron because I live right there and I walk on Byron every day. I walk to Starbucks every morning at seven in the morning. I start on Carla, go to Byron, and then cross up to Abbott. So going back to Charles Kessel, where you were saying, we, I would like a study, there's so many facets. I'm very open to gating this whole community like Bal Harbor when someone said, well, that's going to increase value. I'm open to having a gate that allows only uh, residents to, to go out of Byron if they have to go uh, west because you know on rainy days you're taking to your school. You guys have no idea the impact that might occur. And by the way, there's two Byrons. There's past the circle uh, going west, I'm sorry, going north, and, uh, and, and, uh, and I'm sorry, I was talking about Abbott going west off of uh, the mall, but there's Byron past the circle and Byron before the circle. I walk down Byron all the time. So I just don't understand how we're not taking a step back and saying we might have 200 cars moving down Collins. We might have you know, all these parents now having to go up to Collins and around and who knows what that's gonna cause. So the whole point is, is you guys do a whole study for a kayak launch and then you're doing a major traffic change and I'm for sidewalks, I'm for gating the community, I'm for a lot of things, but you did Byron in its own circle, you ignored every other street and there's a lot of cars going through here at all time. And I posted a message on next door and there's a lot of people with conflicting opinions. Of course, when I gave mine, I was a child killer uh, and didn't care about people's lives. But, uh, you know, but the point is this needs to be thought through going back to vision and just choosing one thing in one meeting in one agenda or two meetings, I have no idea. To me, is, is just, you're, you're gonna create a lot of other problems, but thank you for your time and good luck with it, all of it. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker, Mayor, um, is Jeff Rose. Jeff, please state your name, address for the record and your comments. Jeff Rose, 8851 Froud Avenue. I'm just gonna piggyback off what uh, Mr. Andrew Craven said. Everything that he said is absolutely true. I mean, I've witnessed it firsthand, people turning right the wrong way down Bay Drive, people making the illegal U-turns that they're not supposed to be making. Everyone knows if you close just Byron, you're gonna be pushing all the traffic to Bay Drive, which is where not only kids walk to school, but that's where the kids park is. So the best way to, to move forward with this is to absolutely reconsider last week's, last month's resolution, put them together. Mayor, you just said it best about 10 minutes ago. The best way to actually really get this done is to have all the residents in town on board. And the only way to have all the residents in town on board together is by putting them together. The residents will push this together if this is all together. If it's separate, you're just gonna have the Bay, the Bay Drive residents, the Byron residents going against each other at the county level, because everybody knows Bay Drive doesn't have the traffic count study. So if you, so when they look at them individually, it's just gonna show and be Byron. And then we know where everything's gonna go and we're gonna have to wait a long time. So please reconsider last month's put it together so that when everyone, when the mayor and everybody goes to the county level, we're all on the same team and we can fight to get this done. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Next speaker, Steve Schott. Steve, please state your name and for the record and your comments. Hi, can you hear me now? Steve Schott, 9101 Collins Avenue. Again, I'll be yes. brief as I spoke earlier. Uh, thank you again. The, you know, I just want to underscore you know, having a four and a six year old, this is not a walkable town, uh, certainly not with children. And this, from a safety point of view, I like the idea of, again, where you gate uh, and, and allow the residents access in and out. But at the end of the day, closing these streets will make it a lot safer and a lot better. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Next speaker. Speaker is Ashley Diner. Ashley, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Ashley, uh, can you unmute yourself? Am I unmuted? Yes, now you are. Okay. Thank you. I sound a lot better unmuted. Uh, Ashley Diener from 9500 Bay Drive. Good evening, everybody. I have to agree with the proposal to combine the, the two um, street closures because with the combine, we have enough choose in order to make it happen. The mayor had mentioned that it was gonna be a very uphill challenge in order to get this through the uh, county. So if you just push one, 
maybe or maybe not it'll go through, but then you have the other one left over to come back again and try that again. Doesn't make any sense. You might as well combine the two of them and give it your best shot one time and let's push it through and let's all work together to get both of them pushed at the same time. Otherwise, you let you let one go and then the chance of that happening the second time are, are pretty nil. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Next speaker, please. Well, speaker is Peter Hickey. Peter, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Peter Hickey, 9250 Bay Drive. Uh, I wanna thank you for your time and attention here. Uh, just to reiterate and support the previous comments, I think they were all spot on. Um, in short, I think we need to cut to the chase. We're talking about gating the community. If we were gonna make this safe, if we're gonna make this fair, if we're gonna have a more long-term vision, uh, that's where the discussion needs to lead in my opinion. And certainly uh, we cannot move forward on Byron without consideration of Bay. This is a huge uh, decision that will impact the entire community. So I, I'm a little worried here that uh, the community hasn't spoken. Uh, beyond the, the people that are participating. But thank you for your attention. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Sharon H. Sharon, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Sharon, take your uh, muting off, please. Well, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, we can hear okay. you. Sharon Sakmo, 9516 Bay Drive. Uh, I kind of agree with what uh, previous speakers spoke about, but uh, unfortunately, I think that, the, that if we close any of the street, or especially if we close both of the street, it's going to create a safety in case of ev evacuation or something like that, an emergency, because the only exit from the street from the neighborhood is going to be to 96 to call to Harding and Collins, which will create a big mess, which is already there right now. Everybody can see what's going on this time of the year over there. It's impossible to cut to Harding. So I think the only solution is, is only only if we'll be able to gate the whole neighborhood and then we limit the people coming in. Going out, you still need to have an option to be, to be able to go to 96th Street and make a left turn because if somebody want to go to Bay Harbor from our neighborhood, it's going to take him 15 minutes to go to the traffic to Harding, to Collins, make a left turn and left again, which will be impossible to do, especially in, case, in this time of the year with everything is packed and, and uh, especially now with the mall is building like a huge addition to the mall on 96th Street over there. It's going to be crazy traffic over there. So the only way I can, I will support the closing of the street is if we close, if we get the whole neighborhood and then we can control who's coming in and then leave an exit for only for the resident to, go, to get out of Bay or from Byron and whatever. But uh, I don't think that the town is in that step yet, but just closing these two streets together right now is going to be a mess also. That's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Next speaker. Next speaker is Jordan W. Jordan, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Uh, Jordan Wachtel, 9381 Abbott Avenue. Um, I agree with Sharon and the other speakers that we should look into gating the community because I think we're dealing with a larger issue over here. I live at the end of Abbott on the dead end street. And I can't tell you how many cars zip down here thinking they can get through. And when they realize it's a dead end, they literally go twice as fast the other way back. Um, and I think when you close Byron and Bay, uh, you're going to have that issue for many, many years until Waze and all these other programs pick it up. And I think it creates more of an issue than we're dealing with just by closing streets. There's been numerous times where my kids are in the street, even when we cross over here on 94th Street by the Publix, there's not one car that even stops at the stop sign, either going westbound from Byron, or from, um, going westbound making a right by Publix, or going eastbound off Byron to get to Collins. There's just no one stopping. So I think closing all the streets is a great idea, even those two especially. But I think we're dealing with a more, much larger issue of cars just speeding through and not caring at all. And that's what we really need to figure out, how we stop these people from driving the way they do. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Mayor, Next. Jordan, can you please say your last name again? Jordan, are you there? We couldn't get his last name. There he is. Sorry, he's, Jordan, he's back. I thought I thought he said it. Jordan Wachtel. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Any you. Any speakers, Sandra? No more speakers, Mayor. 
Okay, let me just say for the record, before we get into the conversation. Three more. Three more. Okay, let's, 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 let's go ahead. As soon as I said it, they raised their hand. Go ahead. Suzanne Falcon, Falcon, please state your name and address for the record. Hi, Suzanne Falcon, 9549 Bay Drive. I appreciate you hearing me twice. And I appreciate that you're open to um, being swayed, I think is how you phrased it. Uh, and the my first comment is, uh, overall, I agree with everybody that if I would appreciate if there would be an overall plan, but I also understand the urge to try to get something, some movement made, some progress made on what's a difficult situation for my neighbors on Byron. Having said that, um, I agree with my neighbors who have just spoken previously that being a resident on Bay, you will see that there's constant traffic going the wrong direction, taking an illegal turn both ways, coming off of 96 onto Bay or off of Bay, making a left. And for whatever reason, they go really fast. And so I do believe that, I think the one point I'd really like to make is what is the harm in combining them? So I understand the urge to, to close Byron. I do see the harm. And if it's just Byron and we don't consider Bay now together, then it could be difficult to then later have Bay be considered. If we include them together, I think the big question I want to ask is what's the harm? Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Next speaker, please. Next speaker will be Caroline Baumel. Caroline, please tell your name and address for the record. Your it's Car oh, sorry, Carolyn Baumel, B A U M E L, 9481 Bay Drive. Um, I guess I've been hearing all these arguments for several weeks, and I don't know has anyone ever posed the question about who actually did the traffic research and made the ultimate decision in the Bay Harbor Island area? I think it was a very well thought out way to keep outside residential, outside of the residential residences, the traffic flow out of the actual neighborhood. And I think that's something that you really need to sit back and reconsider. Is Byron the answer? Is Bay Road the answer? I think in fact, what you should look is to see if it exists, a model from the Bay Harbor Islands and how they determined to close off the streets off of the main street, 96th Street. I really think that's your biggest consideration. The other consideration, of course, is I guess it does make sense. If you do one, you might as well do the other. But I think other streets will suffer just as much because people are going to look for alternative ways to get in and out of the residential section, if there's a accident on Collins or Harding or even 96th Street. And I don't think you're really understanding all of the implications without looking at the whole picture. And the whole picture would include the entire residential section, the single family homes in Surfside. So if in fact, no one has looked at how Bay Harbor Islands came about their solution of why they close certain streets. Maybe it's something Surfside needs to do as well. That's it. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker will be Ruth. I'm going to butcher her name. Nello. Say your name. And I, I am. Actually, I'm calling in behalf of my wife and um, 9540 Bay Drive. I was. Um, and your name and address uh, for the record, please. 9540 Bay Drive. And your name? Ru Name, my name is Shimshan, and I'm Ruth Malou's husband. She's currently unavailable, and um, I'm speaking on her behalf. Um, I uh, did not catch the, the previous conversation because I wasn't able to log in, and I'm concerned about this uh, closure. If uh, they were talking about closing, closing uh, only and closing only Byron at the beginning, I'm not sure how that went. But if if you're considering closing Byron only and then opening up Bay Drive, that will be terrible. And I think I need to speak up. Um, I'm not sure if you spoke about the plan to um, launch a public kayak. Or or was that already spoken or not? Well, we did speak about that, but so, you can so go I ahead think it's a terrible I think I believe it's a terrible, terrible 
and decision to um, to take upon something like that. Not only is the traffic right now with the park itself so congested, and at certain times, and most times when I when I approach uh, my block, it becomes so congested it can't even park. It can't find a parking for myself sometimes in my own driveway. So. Um, Imagine if you open up to a public to launch kayaks. Have you been uh, in Miami Beach uh, around uh, the 60, 68th Street? Have you seen how that goes over there? If you do, then you'll know that this is a terrible mistake. Not only because I'm a neighbor, but the whole block or the whole few blocks will suffer from that and everyone will suffer from the congestion as it is. And you're inviting people who for, or from different different neighborhoods, from different places, and you don't even know who you're dealing with, um, to come and just launch their kayaks just because we have an excess an excess of water to into the bay. There are other places you can post some things like that. So I am opposing 100. percent Thank you. Next speaker, please. Speaker is Mayor Hirsch. Please say your name and add it to the record in your comments. Hi, Mayor Hertz, 9557 Bay Drive. I um, just want to thank the commission for trying to do everything they can to, uh, you guys can, to make the town better. Um, I do live across the street from the park, and I love living here. Uh, we chose to live here when we got this house about 10 years ago. And I understand living here when we we're going to be across the street from the park, there was going to be you know, extra traffic because of, there wasn't so many programs then, but now I'm happy with it. There's days I come home. And there's no parking, understandable. Sometimes I have to park at the other side of the block. Um, however, my concern is voicing the concern of many other neighbors here on Bay is that if we go ahead with Bay, um, we will, uh, Bar sorry, Byron, we will have a problem um, with traffic. It's, it's unavoidable. I, I know that uh, one of the commissioners before mentioned that there's no, he doesn't believe or feel um, that that will be the case, but from seeing what happens here during um, busy hours, um, going to school, but more importantly in the evening, this place will become this block will be very unsafe. I, I'm not even sure if cl full closure on both blocks is a great idea because it took me the other day about 15 minutes to get from here to Collins Avenue. Um, but definitely just closing uh, Byron. I think we're opening ourselves up to a uh, safety hazard. Um, which I don't know if our town wants to look at right now. It's, it's very scary. Um, I have children, but I see so many children who go through this block and I just, we should really reconsider how we're doing this. Thank you so much for your time. Have a good night. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Speaker Sam Grinwald. Sam, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Hi, my name is Sam Grinwald. I live at 9236 Bay Drive. I actually, as I'm talking to you, uh, got in my car and decided to take a little drive to make sure, you know, what I'm going to say is correct and everything is, you know, as is. And the traffic that we're going to experience by closing um, Byron is going to be a nightmare. Um, imagine trying to leave um, Surfside, going to Collins Avenue. You have pedestrians trying to cross the street. You have, you can't make a right on a red for a good reason there. The traffic's in a backup galore. You have, um, you know, and you have everyone that crosses in that area. You see how it is now with the, um, the influx of, you know, tourism and the influx of people that want to move to this beautiful neighborhood. You guys have done a phenomenal job to this. It's got to be reconsidered together. It can't just be done in itself. If you guys close by it on itself, you know, it'll be forever and unfortunately, maybe a disaster to happen, uh, God forbid, like someone earlier on the call said, a pregnant woman got hit by 89th and Collins. You don't want to have that and say, whoops, I'm sorry. It's got to be reconsidered or not done altogether. In addition to the traffic nightmare that we're going to experience, all of us trying to you know, take our kids to school or wherever it is in Bay Harbor or in that direction to leave Surfside, that one exit, 95th and Collins, or 95th and Harding, is, go, is going to back up everything tremendously. I have kids. I walk. I see. I see the concern that they have on Byron. I get it. I understand it. But frankly, the people that moved there moved there knowing exactly what they're moving into, and it was there before. It wasn't a surprise. It didn't come up on this. Earlier in the call, some people mentioned maybe gay in the community can reduce the income of traffic. Now I know that takes a lot of studies, 
But at the end of the day, as a community as a whole, not just because I live in Bay Drive and you know where I live, I see cars fly because there's a gap of no stop sign between um, 93rd and 92nd. There's a big, long gap, and the cars fly around the corner. And I fear for my kids when they walk in the morning to school or if they walk to synagogue. But it's just going to add more traffic. And um, I think that in general, everyone I've heard speak prior to this had voiced a concern other than the commission or the, uh, the, you know, the board members here. I haven't really heard anyone speak in favor as a community member about closing Byron. So when you say you want to hear what the community says, I think this, this call itself spoke, you know, you know, spoken volumes. I want to say thank you guys for all the hard work. It's not easy dedicating your time at, on a Thursday night. It's 930. I know what it's like. Thank you for everything you guys do, but I think it's extremely important that we take this and we reconsider the vote you guys had last month that many of us were unaware of until the day you guys were actually going to vote for it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else, Sandra? I'm going to say I don't have any more public speakers. Okay. We'll close the public portion of the meeting. And let me just open this discussion back up by saying that uh, this was something that... Uh, was on a campaign list promise from a long time ago. Uh, I brought it to the commission and uh, I wrote the, uh, I wrote the uh, resolution. And at the meeting, it became apparent that closing Bay Drive was also going to be doable. I didn't think that I could get the support to do both at the same time, but uh, the support was there. And, but for the town attorney uh, reminding us that we hadn't advertised the uh, Bay Drive portion of the, uh, of the meeting for the road closure, we ended up having to only close Byron. But what we did do at that meeting was we had a 5-0 direction from the commissioner, maybe it was 4-0, uh, for me to go ahead and prepare the resolution to close Bay which is exactly why we're here today. So I think the idea that we didn't want to do them both is, 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 is not correct. We always, I always wanted to do them both. And I was just really pleased that uh, everybody came along with that same idea. And it was always the intention to come back at this meeting and finish the, uh, the discussion and get the resolution done um, to go ahead and, uh, include Bay Drive. So I, what I would do and what I would ask for a, 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 a motion to do is, uh, and it would probably have to come from one of us that approved the motion last time, is to reconsider the uh, closure of Byron Avenue and add the closure of Bay uh, Drive to that resolution so we have both on the same resolution. And what we'll do is, if it's okay with the commission, um, uh, uh, Lily and I can work on getting the other whereas is um, that would apply to Bay Drive so that the resolution is comprehensive with respect to all the reasons why um, both of those streets need to be closed, all the reasons why it's going to be the only choice that we can make. And I agree with a lot of the speakers that we will all be pulling in the same direction and that will give us a unified uh, front to make sure that this gets done. So I would I would urge somebody to make a motion, somebody on the winning side of that, uh, that uh, their two hands are going up. I'm, I'm optimistic that we're gonna get it done. Go ahead, Nellie, what would you like to say? Well, I, I can make the motion, but I wasn't here, I wasn't in the meeting for the Byron closure. So maybe Tina can make the motion and I'll second her motion. And okay, I'm very Tina. happy to see both being closed at the same time. Okay, hold on. Lily wants to This is to not about comment. dividing our town. Yeah, it's about making I, it better. If I can, we need to rescind the um, resolution from last month. I no, believe. we're going to edit it. We're going to modify it. Yeah, if I may, Mayor, Vice Mayor, I think procedurally the proper uh, course is to amend the December 8th resolution that supported the Byron Avenue closure to add Bay Drive. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody that wants to make that motion? Charles? Uh, uh, Mike uh, is, I, yeah, now I unmuted. I'd actually like to just speak speak about this for a moment, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Um, 
my assessment at this time is the Bay issue is real. It's real now. It very well may get worse in the future um, with Byron closed. Um, but there are real solutions now. There's police enforcement of that horrible illegal U-turn. There's um, you know there's there are improvements that can be done. The same that were done on the on the south side of town. Over and over, things were changed and modified. Until now, it's quite a workable um, you know framework for traffic flow that does what we want it to do. There are traffic tables, which I love for calming traffic because you have to go up and you have to go down. And if you're on them fast, you're on Mr. Wild, Mr. Toad's wild ride with, and that's no allusion to kids in the playground. Um, th that, those are issues that can be solved now. Byron, on the other hand, is problematic by design. It's not about illegal turns. It's about three lanes, two heading east or two heading west, where everyone wants to go to the mainland to work, and then one heading east that doesn't get a lot of traffic based on my observation. So I think that, and we had great, great public feedback, right? Um, someone asked, what's the complication or what's the problem with bundling it? That's the problem, bundling it, all right? It's like bundling your, Com your Comcast service with the you know, with everything, you, there's more factors for that for the county to say no. There's more things for to delay it, um, and uh, and so that's why actually with this conversation, I'm more solidified with the vote from last month that that was the right approach. Um, and everything else is just going to overcomplicate it and give more bureaucratic reasons to not do anything. Um, and then the notion of closing the town and gating it. Um, you know, perhaps people haven't lived in the gated communities that haven't found it to be very successful, but very problematic. Um, and I'm not so sure it's so great in our neighbor at Ball Harbor next door either. Um, but those are my thoughts. And I really appreciate everybody's concern. We're all in this together, but it's just a matter of how to do it. And, um, and those are my thoughts where I stood. And I apologize if it doesn't satisfy everyone. Thank you, Charles. Tina? Okay, so I'd like to touch on some of the things some of the speakers said. Uh, I, I will make that motion to, so the motion is to amend the ordinance, the resolution from, uh, sorry, December 8th to include Bay Drive. Okay, is there a second? I second that motion. Okay, very good discussion. Can Go I ahead, say Tina. something? No, no, um, just, I, Tina, Tina's still oh, talking. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, Okay, so what I'd like to touch upon, some of the things the speaker said, because I have some experience with this, um, several people mentioned gating the community. Um, gating the community essentially would turn the town into an HOA. We still need approval from the county because you have, uh, there, there was an issue with 88th Street in Byron because the town um, did close it. I don't know the full history, I wasn't here, but I know that um, the town closed the closed 88th and Byron and there was a lawsuit and we lost. And that's, and we, what was put in place was the traffic circle, which I think uh, on the previous commission, on my, the, my commission, we did add the extra circle in Abbott, which I think fixed the issue over there for the most part. Um, essentially anything we wanna do goes to the county. So uh, I would say, I think it's best to try to do the Byron and Bay because if we can't get those closed, how are we really going to get the town gated? And and the gating is it's a uh, it's many steps. It's complicated. We discussed it. We didn't actually even discuss it on the last commission. It was in the agenda. I read everything, but it never got discussed. So I do know what it entails. And and it's you know anything like this, it requires a study whether we do it or the county does it. There's a number of car counts they look for. But right now there is a program in the Flamingo Park area in um, Miami Beach. And it's called uh, sorry, Slow Streets. I would, I'd like to see us um, add that in there. Perhaps we could be applying to uh, enter the program of Slow Streets because that would apply to the town, to the town townwide. So we could maybe. Um, get this done on all our streets to make them safer. It's about uh, having the streets clo closed off to and only residents 
can drive on them. So I, I would like to see us look into that program. Let's do that. Let's do that in a separate motion, you know. So there's there's a motion on the table to amend the existing uh, uh, resolution to close Byron and add Bay, and we'll supplement the whereas clauses. Is that okay with your motion, Tina, to go ahead and supplement the whereas clauses? Sure. Okay. Uh, I, I think too, if there's some kind of uh, report about it, how, how because, you know, uh, just to tie it in, because the Byron has a very extensive report attached to it. Okay, well, we'll obviously, we'll, we'll do the best we can. The, the object of the, the motion is to get the job done. So right. I want to... I want to get this moving. Go ahead. Right, so you're, but, um, you know, because Bay, Bay has a lot of uh, different issues. You know, you have the children going to school. You have that's a park fine. Right we're gonna there. we're gonna we're gonna make that part of the resolution. Okay. okay. Great. So anyway, uh, Nellie, go ahead. No, I just wanted to say that um, I don't agree with um, uh, some one of your comments, Charles, about um, the fact that people might. That there would be a that it's easier to just do Byron Avenue in one shot and leave Bay for later because you know there's residents that will make a comment and there's residents that will be very upset on Friday mm -hmm. and they're going to come out and they're going to make a lot of noise just as one resident did on 88th Street and look what happened we had to take the stop signs out because of this one resident that went to the county. Whereas to, if we make everyone happy, it'll be, a, I, in my opinion, a much easier transition and it will be easier for residents to, for, for the county to agree on allowing us to close these streets because we won't have resistance from anyone else. And then they'll come out with all this, the reasons why not to close Byron because of the situation on Bay. And whereas to combining them both and having all our residents happy is, I think, the best solution to resolve this problem once and for all. And that's all I had to say. Thank you. Okay. But other I than that, you're... everything else was great. I, I think you're right. Tina, thank you for standing up and doing this. Um, Nelly, thank you for seconding it. Charles, I, I respect your opinion. Um, and... Um, I, from from my part, this was the intention from the very beginning, and we're not we're not trying to gate the community right now. That's not the issue, although that's something that uh, might be very good in the future. But this is a small move, uh, it, not towards gating, but it's a small move to make our residents safer, and to make our town more walkable and to make it more of a tranquil place and a wonderful place to live. We're already going strongly in that direction. So Madam Clerk, please call uh, me. Mayor, if I may, I'm sorry. I just want to clarify the record, if I may. Um, Commissioner Velasquez had recused herself from the December 8th resolution uh, supporting the closure of Byron. I just want to be clear that tonight, if this is an amended resolution, it's only to add Bay Drive to that Correct. resolution. Thus the vote pertains to Bay Drive and she's Correct. not voting on the Byron Avenue, which was already previously voted on back in December. Thank you for that, Madam Attorney. Uh, Sandra, call the question. May I just add one thing, Mr. Mayor? In yes. 30, 30 seconds. Um, another thing that I'm concerned about about this is that we still have the park there where everyone's going to be driving apparently to the park and then turning around somehow, I don't envision what solution there is for that because they won't be able to leave uh, other than turning around drive. the other way. So that seems be to be the drive to the park. park. You'd have to drop your kids off at the end of the street. Call the question, please. Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Commissioner Salazar? Not here. Not here. <laughs> Commissioner Castle? No. Vice Mayor Paul? Yes. Mayor Burkett? Yes. Mayor, the motion carries. Thank you very much. You can bring uh, Ms. Uh, Salzhauer back on. Okay. All right. Uh, the next item that we've got, let's see, is going to be... Uh, 
the revised zoning code, uh, item C. Um, could you read that out for me, uh, Sandra? Mm -hmm. Yes, Mayor. A resolution of the Mayor and Town Commission of the Town of Surfside, Florida, authorizing and directing the Town Manager to work with the Town Clerk, Administration, Town Mayor, and Commission, and Planning and Zoning Board to coordinate and schedule a process and a timeline for review and consideration of a proposed new zoning code, providing for implementation and providing for an effective date. Item 5C. Thank you very much. Now, folks, before we get into this discussion, just let me give you a little background. Um, this started with our efforts to stop the hyperdevelopment in our town. Um, this commission gave direction to the town attorneys um, and all the commissioners were invited to participate in putting together um, a, a new zoning code that incorporated the old zoning code, which was the 2006 code, the good stuff from that code as a baseline and then was directed, the, the, the attorneys were directed to go ahead and try to pull out whatever we thought was useful, constructive, and important to keep in the new code. All the commissioners were invited to give their input, and I know many did. I know we had, uh, we had written um, suggestions, we had verbal suggestions, and what that has culminated in is a draft. For your review, which was sent around probably a week ago, approximately, and uh, the the uh, decision was made to not bring this um, for first reading because we wanted everybody to have as much input as they could. And what we've got here in front of you is a framework for discussion. Nothing is written in stone. Um, nothing is done and everything is open for discussion. It's simply a starting point um, that I'm hopeful has incorporated at least um, the initial comments from all of you. And there are some comments in there from our attorneys and from others in the community who have been extremely helpful in crafting and pick, really picking out the, uh, the things that were important um, in the newer code to add to the older code. So having said that, I just wanna add one more thing for your consideration tonight, and that is our zoning in progress. We currently have a zoning in progress, which basically incorporates some of the new stuff that we've put forward and uh, the uh, 2006 code. So what has to happen is uh, when projects are being reviewed, um, those projects have to be measured against the zoning in progress document, which incorporates those things that we put forward um, as new things and the 2006 code. Um, I would like you to consider using, replacing that zoning in progress document with this new framework. And what that would do is that would at least give a little more direction to the, uh, to the people that are coming into town with new projects, what we also should consider doing, I think, is for those people that have projects that are currently in the pipeline, saying to those people, okay, well, listen, you've been operating under the zoning in progress up to this point, and you guys, you guys have the choice of using whatever's in the zoning in progress that's been operative to this point, or what you're gonna find in this new document, okay? And this new document, like I said, incorporates the old code, and the, the best ideas that we've come up with thus far. So anyway, having said that, um, it's wide open for you to do anything that you like. And uh, let's start the conversation with you, Tina. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would like to motion to reject this resolution. Um, you don't need a resolution to hold a workshop. I'm a little bit disturbed that the actual draft itself doesn't have draft written on every page. So it's, um, like you said, it's, it's a work in progress. It's not ready for being used in zoning in progress. It has not been fully reviewed um, by all of us. I've not put in all my inputs to it. I, uh, the only input that may have been mine was things that were said at public meetings. I've not met with the attorneys to fully discuss this. Um, the resolution troubles me because it mentions expeditious review, and this is something that really needs careful consideration. So I am not going to move on this 
uh, resolution. I motion to reject the resolution. However, um, I welcome workshops. I welcome meetings to go over this, but it needs to have draft written on every single page. It is not, uh, you know, it, the way it looks is like it's ready to move forward and it is not. Thank you. Eliana? Um, I support the vice mayor. I feel exactly the same way. Uh, this is exactly what I was talking about, where you just jump to the front of the line by calling something a resolution and putting it on the agenda. Something that is this important that impacts every single resident needs to go through the proper channels. From my recollection, and I'm, I, I, you know, I don't even remember saying, let's write a whole new code. What I remember saying is let's close the loopholes. There were obvious loopholes. We talked about changing the definition of gross acreage. We, checked up, we talked about changing the lot coverage area so that you didn't have these loopholes with covered areas. A couple of tweaks to the code and we would have been in business months ago. It didn't require an entire rewrite. I think from the very beginning, you know, the, the mayor has said repeatedly, oh, this is a collaborative process, but yet he comes out with this, I promised the residents I was gonna bring back the 2006 code and he tried to put it on the ballot. Do you remember this? He wanted us to bring back the, tw the 2006 code, declare the quote Deitch code, even though it was really passed under Mayor Burkett, you know, some kind of evil thing and that we should vote on the past election to bring back an old code that no one even knew anything about. So that is really the, the perfect example of pushing forward something. I am completely against overdevelopment. Anyone who's heard me at the meetings for the past four years knows I'm a broken record. And I disagree with so many people that I agree with on other issues because I don't share their vision that there is sort of this unbridled right to do whatever you want with your property. I think that, you know, the right for one person to do something only extends as far as it impacts someone else. And while someone has a right to enjoy their property, they don't have a right to create misery for their neighbors. And when you build a giant building and you're blocking the air and the light and you're putting a roof deck and now there's noise and then you have an air conditioner on the side right next to where their baby's trying to sleep or whatever, these things really detract from the quality of life of the neighbors. And this is a neighborhood. Surfside is a neighborhood and we all need to work together. So, and that starts with planning and zoning, where things are being built, how things, how people are constructing their homes. So I agree with the mayor on a lot of some of the things he's trying to do with these changes, but I disagree with the method that we're doing it. I don't think it needs to be shoved here, you know, as a, as a resolution, let's bring something back. I agree with the vice mayor. It's gotta be a draft. It's gotta go to workshops. We've gotta talk about this. We've had, we have not had the opportunity to even read through it ourselves. So much like okay. you just voted with no with a sad face, I would vote no right now with a sad face on this because I haven't had the time to look at it. And I don't want someone calling this the Saul's Hauer code one day and saying it's a POS and I signed it. So I have to do my due diligence and we each need to do our due diligence for something that's going to outlive us. Okay. One of these things, for example, said any home designated before 1970 could be historic. I mean, every house in this neighborhood was built before 1970. We need to have stricter guidelines. What makes Thank something you, historic? Well, this we're is going. important. Please I think we should have more time on Charles, this. Go ahead. Um, thank you, everyone. And um, I see this differently. Um, I I think that um, you know timing is important to uh, to get a code that's clear um, out there. Um, I think that we have decided as a commission that it was to be the most restrictive of the code. Um, there was a time when the mayor wanted to go back to the original code and, um, and through conversation and discussion and open meetings, um, he, in my opinion, changed his mind to really do the best of the code. Um, I don't think there are bad intentions here. Um, I also asked for a structure of how this would unfold. So I appreciate proposing structure of how it would unfold. Um, that said, um, I haven't had a chance to fully vet it either. Um, my understanding is that this would introduce the number of meetings, bringing it to the, to the public. Um, I appreciate the draft document being made public and being circulated for feedback. Um, and um, it's not a done deal. So I think it's just the method and perhaps the, the, uh, the, the tactics of, um, of putting this forth. I like that it's out in the public, but at the same time, I don't want to add to the nervousness of neighbors that think that it's a done, done cooked, baked deal. Um, but I don't think that was the intention here. Again, um, 
you know, if this isn't the right forum to do it and, um, and it's not, you know, by protocol and procedure, the right, the right way, that's fine with me. By the same token, if, um, if it provides a framework for us to move forward with steps and methodology, then, um, then that's, that's good for me too. Um, clearly we need input from everyone in this community and, and from beyond. Um, our community has, has a lot of expertise but I'd like review from beyond the community, you know, organizations that are, um, that are not for profit and are vetted and, um, and have sustainability and resiliency and the future in mind. Um, I'd also like a tie in with the, with the master plan, um, the plan being a living, breathing kind of approach um, as we heard earlier um, and review of the charrette. Um, I think the town is clamoring for that and individual members but I, I don't feel that anything um, um, deceptive is, is being done. I just think that we need to talk about the best approach. That's right. Okay, Nelly. Uh, yes, um, I, I agree there's things that need to be changed in, in this uh, planning and zoning um, document that we have in front of us. Example, the subdivisions, I don't like that part. I don't like the part about the 1976 either. Um, I do think that we do need to have workshops and that's what I really thought we were gonna have. Workshops with the residents, you get the input from all our residents, not just the few, um, not just the most knowledgeable, but the, thing, the things that affect all our residents. Um, I guess this is, I don't think this was done in, at, out of um, any kind of um, misleading the public or misleading the residents. I think it's trying to fix the things that are wrong with our code right now. Um, I don't think this is like when we had the beach ordinance that it brought, was brought to us four days before uh, the commission meeting and nobody had ever discussed this before. I think this needs to be discussed and it needs to be brought in front of our residents and have workshops and talk about it at length. Um, and uh, that's, that's, that's my input on this. Okay, thank you. Tina, does your ordinance about pet grooming have drafts stamped all over it, by the way? I don't think so. Okay, so the point is, is all this was, was an effort to put this in front of you, okay? And I think that the hyperventilation about the, uh, the the idea that it's being trying to, we're trying to rush it is ridiculous. I'll tell you what it says, let me read it to you. And let me read it to you, Ms. Salzhauer, okay? It says basically, we're authorizing and directing the town manager to work with the town clerk, administration, town mayor, commission, planning board to coordinate and schedule a process and timeline for review and consideration of a proposed new zoning code, okay? So I don't know what part of that you missed in your method rant, Commissioner Salzauer, okay? But the point is, is it was put on the agenda to be considered, that's all. There's nothing nefarious going on here. And as you can tell, I slightly resent the fact that you use every opportunity to try to suggest somebody's doing something bad. Okay, the point, put your hand down for a second. I got two minutes, it's distracting. That's not appreciated either. But the bottom line is, is we've got a process here. We're trying to get through it. We've got a backlog on our zoning. We've got people complaining about things that need to be done. I said at the outset, it's strictly a framework and it's a work in progress, okay? If there's something in there you don't like, you don't take it and throw it out the window. You comment constructively and you say, hey, I don't like this, okay? And it gets fixed, okay? And if a majority agrees with you, you get it done. So the point of the matter is, is this is just a process. And if we listen to you, okay, nothing would ever happen here. Nothing would ever, what, what is it that you've accomplished since you've been a commissioner? Okay. I'm trying to get this stuff done. I'm trying to get these streets closed. I'm trying to get the power lines underground. I'm trying to get the water bills reduced. And all you do is run interference. It's very, very annoying. Very annoying. So let's be clear. This is on the agenda because we got people that asked for it. We've got people that asked for the information that's on there in the residential area. We've got people that asked for buildings that are smaller on Collins Avenue. We got people that asked for less ballrooms, office buildings, and a, prolifer a pro proliferation of large projects along our corridor. 
That's why we have this in front of us, okay? Not for any other reason, okay? And it takes constructive help to get these things move forward, not an opportunity to take shots at people who've been working on this for weeks and weeks and weeks, okay? All right, so I guess we're gonna go around again. So we'll go around for two minutes and we'll start with you, Tina. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, you asked me a question and you answered it yourself, so I'd like to answer for you. The reason my ordinance for the dog grooming doesn't have um, drafts, draft all of it. doesn't have draft written on it is because we voted on it last month. It's in the it's in the uh, minutes that we voted to move forward with the ordinance. It was a three two vote. I don't recall this ever being voted on. This is a much more complex issue than a simple zoning code amendment. So this requires careful consideration, not expeditious review. I did not suggest anything nefarious, but let me remind you back when, when during the campaign, you, you spread some information about me that I voted for the P3 and I supported selling the town for 99 years. And that was not true. I supported a resolution to explore the idea. I did not support anything further than that. This resolution is not necessary to have a workshop, to have another meeting. This needs to be on a meeting on its own. The rest of this meeting is going to be taken up by public comment because people are outraged because it, they think it's moving forward. And you know what? It doesn't have drafts stamped all over it and it needed to. Okay. So that's, that's where I'm coming from here. Whatever. Eliana. Okay, so I want to clarify that you just said this is just a suggestion, and then you said I'd like this to be the zoning in progress. Do you understand that the zoning in progress? Start the is clock again at uh, two minutes, please. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Did you? Was I muted? No, the clock okay. was just okay. didn't have enough time. Um, you started this meeting by saying, "Here's my here's my suggestion. Let's make it the zoning in progress." A zoning in progress is the rule. It's the it's the rules that everybody now building has to operate under. So by saying that you're just throwing it out there for discussion and then saying, but let's make it the rule while we talk about whether it's the rule is not uh, is contradictory. Okay. So don't even say I'm just throwing it out there and then say, hey guys, let's make this the rule at the same time because making something into a zoning in progress means that everybody has to play under these rules immediately. That means that somebody tomorrow coming before the PNZ has to meet the, the every single part of this version of the zoning in progress, this new code. What we can do, and by the way, I'm not gonna waste time addressing what have I done since I was elected. This is not, I'm not interested in sitting here and, and checking off what I who's done more than who what I'm interested in doing is being honest with the residents about the process what we can do right now is we can start workshops and we can look at your code and we can think about it for a long time what we can actually do and what I've tried to do multiple times is say hey let's change the word gross acreage to acreage let's do that right now in a meeting these are things that we could have been doing Tina has tried to do it repeatedly I've tried to do it and every time we try to do it you say guys guys we're working on a code you don't need to do that now we're going to get to that later we could have made the changes. We could have said no more hotels south of 93rd Street. We could have said that already. No more hotels in town. We could have made those changes without this wholesale $100,000 spending on a rewrite of a code that didn't need to be reinvented. I'm happy to continue workshopping this, et cetera, but I don't think it's fair to say, let's make this the rules right now. Well, no one even knows what's in it. And to be honest, there's a lot of things in there that are problematic. Okay, but I am on the same page as you as far as not having overdevelopment. So we should be working together. And instead, you're trying to antagonize me and make this into a you're the hero of the entire universe for some reason on this issue. This is not this is, zoning is a separate thing. We can do we can fix the problems in the code right now. Next week, we can already vote on let's change the lot coverage or let's we can make little changes while we wait to work on this. Okay, you're done, Charles. So just because there's some confusion on the process here, um, I would I would suggest that um, that we ask the town manager to um, to look at what the issues are related to a timeline um, based on what's been um, agreed upon in the past, and that we can roll it out that way um, through the town manager in this town manager led government. Well, that's what the resolution says. Thank you. Um, that's exactly what the resolution says. Who didn't get to speak? Nellie? 
Did you speak yet? I did. I spoke earlier. Yeah, still in the same position. Okay. You know, again, I will I will respond to those comments about uh, you would have done all these things, Commissioner Salzhauer. You would have done them. Well, you could have done them. All you had to do. All you had to do. Don't interrupt me. All you and, and the faces don't help either. All you had to do was make a motion. Okay. That's all you had to do. Yeah, all you had to do is make a motion, get someone to agree with you, and get two more votes, and you could have done whatever you want. So don't come to the meetings and tell us how wonderful you are and how wrong things are and how, how, how difficult it is to get things done. All you have to do is open your mouth and make a motion, okay? And that's the way it happens in government, okay? That's all I got to say. Okay, so anyway... Um, I think right now, with respect to this, it sounds like everybody wants it to be distributed, okay? That's good. It's been distributed. Now, the idea in the resolution was to direct the manager to start having workshops and set it up. Is that not what you want to do? Okay, Tina? Uh, I'm... I'm not going to pass this resolution. Um, I'm fine to have workshops, but I don't believe you need a resolution to have a workshop. That's the resolution moves it forward, which is, a, you know, it's similar to what was going on with the P3. You, you flat out said, because I voted to explore the idea, I supported the wholesale of the town, and I didn't. I, I supported the idea. You don't need this resolution to support your idea. You can present it at a workshop. It needs a meeting on its own. To put it smack in the middle of a regular commission meeting, we can't get to other business. Okay, so I, think, I will not support the resolution, but I will attend a workshop. Okay, I think where you're going is, and, and you're conflating two things. What you supported, okay, was an idea to build a city complex and sell our land for 99 years. That's a little different than supporting a change in a zoning code, okay? That's all, that's the difference. And you're smiling, but that's the difference. So what, what we've got here is we've got a potential to make the zoning code better. And I wonder why you guys haven't even read it. Have you read it? Did you even read it? It's been out for like a week or 10 days. Tina, go ahead. You're not- The zoning code is 186 ahead. pages. Okay, it is not the same thing as looking, you know, what we voted for with the P3 was to allow the process for it to be evaluated to see if it was any good or not. Okay, it, I, I never voted to move it forward. And in fact, there was a resolution put forward that I fought against. There were several things I fought against that were wrong. That's not good. You, yeah, you no, we don't have you want. to go there, but, you know, you're making a comparison and I'm making a comparison to prove a point. You don't need the resolution to put your zoning code forward. You just schedule a workshop, schedule a, a separate commission meeting and it's done. I, you know, I can't support this resolution. Okay, that, that's clear. All right, listen, I think you've already gone, Eliana, one time. Is Charles, do you have a comment before Eliana goes again? Um, I, I just think that we should move on with the agenda. Um, whether this is pulled or whether we just end discussion. I don't think anybody's actually motioned even to move it. Okay, forward. well, then let's do this. We have public, we have some people in the public that want to speak about it. And, you know, again, we've got a huge backlog and we're kind of in limbo right now as it is. Go ahead, Eliana, and then I'm going to have public speakers. One minute. Um, One minute. I, also, I don't think we have to have discussion if this is not a resolution that's moving forward. Usually you have to make a motion, get a second, and then you have Whatever. to- Whatever. Listen, listen, I know, listen, you don't like the subject. Let's have the public comment. Well, okay, let me finish. I still have more time, okay? No, because we are. you're gonna take up the entire meeting. We're not gonna get to anything else. Like forget about the social media or the COVID update or anything else or buying park land or doing anything constructive because- We have people that wanna about, speak. Are you gonna, you, you know? Let, I'm talking, so stop interrupting me. You keep telling me not to interrupt you and I sat there quietly, okay? Like you don't like the topic, now you want, all of a sudden you want to hear things, all right? Not one person that's going to talk now is going to support this, by the way. So you're going to regret saying, let's all talk. But my point was that 
this is not the way to do it. And if you look at the prior agendas, you'll see right on there that I had on the agenda to change the lot coverage. I worked with the with the attorney, Tony Recio. I worked on that, on that um, agenda item to propose the lot coverage change. You told me to take it off because it's going to be in the new code. Tina proposed to change the lot coverage, the acreage thing from gross acre to regular acre. And you said, oh, no, we'll take care of it later. So we've all tried to make these changes. Okay, that's your one minute is up. But your one minute is up. Your one minute is up, but the bottom line is gross sacred. I'm the one that found that in the code. I'm the one that brought that to the And we said, let's Council. change it. And you said, huh? no, we'll wait for later. We could have changed it already. Let's uh, change it tonight. Well, we have zoning in progress right now. It is changed. If, if, you, if you understood the concept of what zoning in progress is, you'd understand that it is changed. But is zoning because in it's progress not... is a, zoning in progress is a temporary hold. We can permanently make that change to the current code. Per First of all, you can't make that change to the code unless you have the first reading, it goes to the planning board, and it comes back. Yes, okay? and we could have done that already. All right, whatever. Go ahead, Nellie. Can't hear you. Hold on one second. All right. Yeah? Okay. Yep, yep. Okay. I, I don't understand what's going on here because what I hear is that you want to have workshops. And what yes. I hear is that this resolution is to create those workshops. So then it, it, and that's exactly what this is for. So what's the problem with having the workshops? Is it that you don't want our residents to know what exactly is happening here? Because I want our residents to know. I want our residents to have all the input. We can I have the workshops without the residents. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Not interrupting anybody, and I'm getting my two minutes. Okay, so I mean, let's just have the workshops. If this resolution is to allow to start all these workshops, then I'm fine with that. What out of what I've read, what I've read so far of this, what I don't agree with is the the part about the subdivision and the part about the 1976 issue. Those I haven't read the whole thing, but those are the two items that stand out the most to me. And I don't agree with those things, but I do want to have the workshops. I want our residents to have the input. I want our residents to be able to make um, comments about the things that we're going to do here. And if it is to change this or change that, then they have the right to say this. Okay, Nellie, your time is up. Um, I'm going to go to the vice mayor and then we're going to have the public comment. Go ahead, vice mayor. Thank you very much, mayor. I just wanted to address uh, commissioner Velasquez. Um, the resolution is not necessary to have the workshops. So I support the workshops. I don't support the resolution. You don't need the resolution to have a, wor a workshop. And I, it just opens the door for this code to move forward without all of our input and the public's input. So that's why I'm taking this stand. I just wanna explain that, thank you. Okay, well, it, it really, it's not an ordinance. It's not a first reading. It's simply a direction, Vice Mayor. But Go ahead, Madam Clerk, call the first speaker. First speaker is Matthew Barnes. Matthew, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Matthew Barnes, Principal Planner with Ackerman LLP. The office is at 98 Southeast 7th Street in Miami. I'm here on behalf of the residents in by Marriott, located at 9200 Collins Avenue. The draft new zoning code contained in the agenda backup removes hotel as a permitted use in the H-40 zoning district. My client has been operating the Marriott Hotel since 2016. The Marriott has been an outstanding corporate citizen and steward of its property in Surfside. Under the ordinance as proposed, the Marriott would be rendered in non-conforming use. While the hotel would be allowed to continue to operate indefinitely, if the hotel were ever to suffer damage or destruction where the cost to restore the structure was greater than 50% of the value of the structure, then the hotel would not be able to be rebuilt. Also, with no ability to rebuild after a catastrophic event, it would be very difficult, if not impossible, for my client to finance or sell the property, and it would cause serious issues with the insurability of the hotel. Elimination of hotel as a permitted use, which is only one of two economically viable permitted uses in the H-40 district, would severely diminish the value of the Marriott property. One of the stated goals of the zoning code revision is to go back to regulations that were in effect circa 2006. 
The zoning code in 2006 did allow motel as a permitted use in the H40 zoning district, which was then called the RM1 district. So removing all lodging uses from the H40 zoning district now would not be consistent with the old code. I urge the commission to consider reinstating hotel as a permitted use in the H40 district in the draft of the new zoning code that will be forthcoming in the upcoming process. At the very least, if hotel is not reinstated as a permitted use, we would urge you to create language in the non-conforming section of the code that would allow for the reestablishment of an existing hotel in the H40 zoning district if it were to be destroyed. We look forward to working with the town on drafting the new zoning code. However, if the town cannot write zoning regulations that are equitable to my client, uh, then my client will have no choice but to defend its property rights. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Joshua Epstein. Joshua, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Joshua Epstein, 9317 Bay Drive. I want to make one thing crystal clear, clear right now, if it's not already in stone. What you're witnessing right now is the mayor having a temper tantrum that his title is not dictator. He doesn't want, this has never been a collaborative process. Nobody else has been able to work on this. What he means by collaboration is everybody who lives at his home named Charles Burkett got a read at this. This was simply a me, 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 me from the very beginning, him with the attorneys racking up close to $100,000 in lawyer fees with nobody else having seen this till 10 days ago. And now he's upset that people with real lives, real things to do, 187 page zoning code in 10 days. Since the beginning of time, since the beginning of when you took office, everyone has put it on the table, Commissioner Salzhauer, I believe Commissioner Kessel and uh, Vice Mayor Paul have put it on the table, different amendments to the, to the zoning code that they wanna see passed. They put it in front of you and so you said, no, 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 this is gonna interfere. We're working on it, we're working on it, we're working on it. And then you have the audacity to come up here and complain about backlog and limbo. You know why the backlog and limbo is? It's because it's taken you eight months and almost $100,000 in loyal, uh, lawyer fees with nobody else having even seen this. And now you're up here saying, well, I would like to give them an option from now on, this is what they're gonna get a work by. You can't come up here and say, well, this is an open discussion. And then 30 seconds later say, I would like to see residents be able to work from this zoning code starting, I don't know what you said, tomorrow or something. You're not the dictator. You will never be five fifths of the commission. You're one fifth of the commission. I know you have an, uh, an item on the agenda to try to make you more powerful. This is not a strong mayor form of government. You will never be the strong mayor of this town. You know what you will be is you'll be voted out in a year and a half. And I look very forward to that when we have someone in that seat who cares about residents' needs, cares about their input. We must have a workshop on this. That is what I've heard from every single person who has uh, opposed this. There must be workshops on this. I mean, it's been eight months. You don't think we could have had a single workshop. I've stood up here multiple meetings. I've heard Commissioner Salzhauer, Vice Mayor Paul say, get the residents in. The one complaint that everyone had about the past commission was that they never consulted the residents along the process. It was dropped on them at the very last minute, which is exactly what you're doing right now. You're worse than Daniel Dutch. You, he did the same exact thing as you, which is why he was voted out. And I look forward to you being voted out. Reject this today. Let's have the workshop. Let's do this the proper way. But you're not the strong mayor. And what you're going to be is you're going to be an old cranky man at your house in a year and a half. Thank you and reject this, please. Very nice. Very nice. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Becky Manuel. Becky, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Hi, Becky Manuel, 9157 Emerson Avenue. Um, I'm just a little confused by uh, this resolution, I guess it is. Um, because I know, Mayor, you said we have a backlog on our zoning, and I know that's a big issue for many people and many houses, so I don't really understand why when we have a backlog and our planning and zoning committee has to now meet multiple times, why we would possibly now introduce a, an entirely new, extremely complex code that it seems like the commissioners have barely even looked at and don't understand. Um, and certainly the people of the town have not gotten a very long time to understand. So first and foremost, that seems to be a really big issue that this would only just um, back us up and confuse everyone a whole lot more. Um, and then second, this idea of zoning in progress that you can just pass something and right away it's the rule of law seems completely uh, on, out of whack. It, you know, how would people possibly know what to do if this was all of a sudden the rule? Um, so I think that's also really ineffective and unfair to constituents, to builders, to everyone, even permit runners. It just doesn't make sense either. Um, 
you mentioned workshops. I don't really understand why you would pass this resolution and then do workshops. That seems also the backwards way to approach this, that you would have to do workshops, explain how everything would work. And then if people agree, have changes, you make amendments, then you would pass a resolution. So again, it doesn't seem like this resolution has anything to do with workshop. And, and lastly, Mr. Mayor, I would ask that you please hold off on um, when, when commissioners disagree with you to say that they're interfering. These are the commissioners that we voted for. You're saying that your townspeople, your, your constituents are interfering by having their voices heard. And the only thing that's being interfered with in that moment is your point of view. So when they disagree with you, that's not interference. That's standing up for what those of us who voted for them want to hear. And so I find it insulting as a constituent for you to say it's interference if they disagree with you. I'm glad when they speak up for us. And to say that they're hyperventilating, just so you know, is an extremely misogynistic word and an extremely misogynistic approach to how people talk and voice their opinion. Thank you. I think you got it all in, Becky. That was very nice. You seem to hit all the bases with that one. Well, Madam Clerk, call the next speaker, please. Next speaker, Mayor, is Jeff Rose. Jeff, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Jeff Rose, 8851 Froud Avenue. I'll make sure I hit all the bases on you on this one too. Thank you. I have so much to say about this new zoning code that the mayor wrote and spearheaded without the input from any other commissioners, the current <laughs> planning and zoning members, or even a town planner. Let's start with the fact that a complete rewrite was never voted on by this commission. And the mayor has spent over $84,000 in attorney's fees on writing this document, and that's just from April to November. We don't even have the billing for the last two months and haven't even started having workshops. Just the mayor's version alone is going to probably cost close to $200,000 by the time we are done. Commissioner Kessel and Velasquez, this is not fiscally responsible, which I know is important to you. I'm sure that the mayor wouldn't be able to ask Jose to bring up the video where the commissioners, commissioners voted on it because it doesn't exist. Talk about an abuse of power and unauthorized use of taxpayer dollars. Now, let's just talk about a few things that the mayor put into this code that is going to cause residents ma major issues. Combination of lots is only allowed with supermajority of the commission approval. We can't even get through half an agenda now. Lot coverage of covered ter terraces conflicts with second floor setbacks. Going mm -hmm. after outstanding permits, even if you have been approved by the Planning and Zoning Board. Not just people, excuse me. Any building built prior to 1970 can be designated historic by the commission at their own whim without any measurable conditions. New height measurements that effectively take away two or three stories of buildings and columns. This is just to name a few. I could really go on for another hour. Here's another great one. The mayor who owns a home on the water in the H38 district has changed the code so that larger accessory buildings are allowed in his own district. In the H30B district, which are dry lots. When Commissioner Velasquez and Commissioner Salazar weren't able to discuss or vote on road closures that affected their streets they live on, as it is a conflict of interest. So this new provision alone should disqualify the mayor from even discussing or voting on this document. That would be the ethical thing to do. So we'll see if he cares about ethics. I strongly urge you commissioners to not even take up a vote on this document. By even taking a vote on this new zoning code, you are enabling, justifying, and validating what the mayor did by spending over $84,000 on his own version of the code without your input. You think there was fallout from the P3 with the last commission? This is a much bigger scandal than the P3. Thank you. Um, let me respond to a couple things so we clarify dates. On March 31st, this item was first placed on the agenda by me probably. On April 28th, there was a comparison of the 2006 code and the 2020 code. Zoning in progress approval was made, okay? The next thing that happened was on May the 12th, motion was made by Vice Mayor Paul to place an ad in the newspaper for a zoning in progress and have the item discussed at the next meeting, seconded by Commissioner Kessel. 
The town attorney requested clarification and direction. The ad stated in order to bring this item forward that we needed to have a meeting, which we did have. Commissioner Salzauer asked if they could have a special meeting in order to address this item. Further discussion took place among the commission on how to proceed in bringing this ordinance back with advertisement requirements. The town attorney said that would be done in an ordinance that would repeal chapter 90. A motion was made by Commissioner Velasquez to move this item forward and seconded by Commissioner Salzhauer to undertake this effort. All voted in favor, okay? On June 3rd, 2020, there was a zoning code workshop, discussion of adoption of a new zoning code with the minutes attached. On July 1st, 2020, there was a zoning code workshop, discussion of adoption of a new zoning code on July 28th, 2020, there was a zoning in progress extension approval. On November the 4th, 2020, there was a zoning in progress extension approval. Every step of this process has been approved by this commission, but in a unanimous basis. The comments that you just heard were absolutely false. One of the comments, actually one of the comments was true. Mr. Rose stated that I had reduced the height of the buildings on Collins Avenue, like that was a bad thing. Yeah, that actually happened. And the other thing that's in there is a provision where we stop people from splitting large lots and making them smaller and smaller in our town, okay? That provision is being proposed. I propose that. I wanna discuss that with the commission because I wanna know if the commission is supportive of people coming into Surfside, buying lots, and then making them smaller and smaller to profit off of that subdevelopment, that subdivision, I should say. So, you know, this thing is getting a little bit out of line. We've got people coming on the phone and what coming on the line and what they're doing is they're using something that nobody has seen yet okay, in order to try to make political points. The bottom line is, again, we were directed to put this in front of the commission. Second, it's on the agenda tonight in the form of a resolution that one of the last speakers talked about, like that was a problem, like the, the code should come before the resolution. The resolution strictly says, hey, we want to begin the process of putting this out to the community and getting feedback. That's all the resolution says. Now, we're going to continue with the speakers. Go ahead, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mayor. Next public speaker is George Kufula. George, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. George Kuslis, 9225 Collins Avenue. Uh, for about the past nine months, uh, planning and zoning approval has proceeded under, as you know, two separate zoning codes and a third document of about a dozen bullets. Uh, the process has been difficult for everybody. Uh, the planners who have to evaluate the applications, the planning board who has to render a decision, and most importantly, the homeowners who have to go through this process. It's a mess. You need something new to go forward with. And that is, uh, so everybody's out of the room. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, look at this, 223 and everybody's out of the room. I guess a bathroom break during uh, my part. Thank you very much. Here, I'm looking for the, the agendas to find where I had the lot coverage amendment um, and where we okay, had- Okay, stop, stop the, interrupting, Commissioner. I want, I want everyone to know George, I'm here. keep going. going you, know what, you know what, Commissioner? Enough, what, what enough. What? Mute, mute that, Commissioner, please. Go ahead, George. Okay, so we, the process has been a mess. Um, and it's, it really needs to be consolidated into one document, one way or another, whether you use uh, Commissioner Salzauer's definition of going to the newer code or the mayor's position of going to the older code, but bringing all these ideas together into one document. And that's where you're at now. So the path forward through workshops, through lots of meetings is the path you wanna be on. Um, now, as you know, I'm well acquainted with the documents that precede this one, and I'm also very well acquainted now with this rewrite. Um, is it a perfect document? No. Is it a good document? Yeah. 
Is it better than the three documents that people have to go through at the moment? Yes, but it has to go through a process of vetting. And, you know, there are things that I would change. There are things I would delete. Uh, there were things that I would clarify, definitions. Of course, there's there's a lot, and there's other stuff other people will find. Uh, and and some of the things, you know, that you've heard about, the, the subdivision of platted lots and the 1970 thing are things that, that need exploration. And that can be pushed off. And finally, after a workshop process, and it won't be one workshop, it'll be several, I think, before you get through this. But I think that's the next step. You have to take this one document that basically takes most of the ideas that are already in the three documents. So no one will be terribly shocked by most of what they read. It's already what you got. And that's how you move forward. The other important item is that a zoning code is a big document, as you all know, as you all unfortunately probably have come to realize. It's also a document that works together. The parts are interrelated. And for the past nine months, there's been a lot of cherry picking of ideas. I hate this, I hate that, let me change this, let me change this. So that that 12 bullet point item that you have as part of zoning in progress, six of the bullets don't work and they're causing people all sorts of problems. So to cherry pick a document and, and say, ah, this is the worst thing ever, we gotta change this, there's no way to go through a zoning code. You have to go through it con comprehensively. It's like editing a manuscript. Um, you look at it, uh, you know, I know the attorneys have already looked at it very carefully from, from their perspective, and there are some things that uh, could be tightened up still, but I think everyone needs to look at it. Residents, uh, commissioners, planning board, attorneys, um, everyone needs to look at this thing going forward. And you are in the, a perfect position now, and whether you pass this as a resolution or just as a, a motion to direct the town manager, the next step is what the mayor has outlined go to workshops, go to meetings. And I think at the end of that process, which may be in three months, two months, whatever, whatever it takes, you will have a document now that is ready to basically become the zoning in progress that now works its way through the official Mayor, progress of first reading, second reading, et cetera. Thank you. Thank you, George. Mayor, we, we're missing three members of the commission. So you don't have a quorum at the moment. Why I said I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Turn that microphone off. Next speaker, please. I'm here so that Sandra knows we have a quorum. That's why I said I was here. I'm just going. Yeah, well, we my see doctor. your face. We see your face. Okay, so but stop talking. We didn't have a quorum. I'm letting her know that I'm here. So we do have a quorum. Oh, okay? Thank you. And, and I listened to George Kuzlis choose to say, you know, George. Thank, Thank you. you, George. I heard everything. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Next speaker, Mayor, it will be Nathan Kasten. Nathan, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Uh, your microphone is uh, muted. Can you hear me? Yes. Ah, good evening, Nathan Kasten. Uh, Ackerman LLP, 98 South East 7th Street, Miami, Florida, and also my home since last March. Uh, <clears throat> I represent Eden Surfside LLC, which is a developer and owner of the property in the 9300 block on Collins Avenue. It's come to our attention that the new draft zoning code removes the language that is currently in the code regarding vested rights. In that section, it provides that nothing in the chapter shall be construed or applied to abrogate the vested rights of a property owner to complete development where the property owner demonstrates and lists three things, including a governmental act of development approval obtained prior to the effective date of this chapter or prior to the effective date of an amendment to the chapter and further upon which the property owner has detriment, detrimentally relied in good faith by making substantial expenditures. The exclusion of the language in the code that currently exists cast doubt on whether a landowner and developer such as Eden, who has secured a governmental act of development approval prior to the effective date of an amendment to the chapter, could faithfully rely on the rights bestowed by the governmental act of development approval. In this instance, the site plan approval for a hotel. I think you all are very well aware that 
my client has spent a significant amount of money in acquiring the property, in obtaining site plan approval, and doing a substantial amount of site work in preparation for and as part of the process of construction. What is happening now is that there is a proposal to change the rules of the game very late in the game. And that has a severe detrimental impact on my client, my client's rights. You've heard from the previous speaker, uh, Matt Barnes, so I will not repeat it, but that historically, in addition to changing the, uh, the vested rights provision, the west side of Collins Avenue for decades has allowed hotel uses or motel uses. This is being changed as well in this proposed draft code. That will significantly reduce the value as well of my client's property as it takes away one of the two uses, historic use, that has been made of that property or those properties in that side of Collins Avenue for many years. I think you are also aware that the uh, town spent a great amount of time just a little over a year ago discussing whether hotel uses should be removed from the H40 zoning district. And ultimately they were not removed. Some restrictions were placed on hotel south of 93rd Street. Neeson, can you please conclude your statement? Yes, well, I think all of the rest of my comments are contained in a letter which I have sent you on behalf of my client. I strongly urge you not to change the vesting language in this code. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Christopher Machado. Christopher, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Good evening, Christopher Machado, Ackerman LLP, 98 Southeast 7th Street, Miami, Florida. I will start off by saying that uh, as a land use lawyer, I have numerous concerns regarding the new code, and I would echo much of what it was, has been said this evening by others expressing anxiety, including my colleagues, Matt Barnes and Lisa Kazan and others, but I will limit my comments to those of most importance to my client. I'm here tonight on behalf of Beach House Hotel LLC, the owner of the Grand Beach at 9449 Collins Avenue. I'm not here to discuss the pending lawsuit that was filed by colleagues of mine. I'm here on this specific issue of zoning. The Grand Beach is deeply concerned by the proposed elimination of hotel use in the H-40 zoning district. Under the new zoning, at least as currently drafted, the Grand Beach Hotel and hotel related uses on the west side of Collins would be rendered legally non-conforming. This sounds inoffensive at first glance, but here's why that's so concerning. Non-conforming uses by law are disfavored and they are encouraged to cease over time. While it is true that the code provides some very basic bare bones protections that would allow the hotel use to continue for the time being, non-conforming status presents several significant challenges. These include difficulty securing financing, trouble obtaining and maintaining insurance, potential difficulty in selling the property due to its substandard zoning status, general diminution in value and investment impairment, inability to alter or expand the use over time, even if the property retains additional development capacity by zoning. There are two others that are of grave importance. First, a heightened burden to operate the use continuously to avoid legal abandonment. The mere closure for six months would serve to terminate the use by operation of law. I would note that the risks inherent in this continuous operation obligation are ever more salient in light of the mandatory COVID closures we've experienced this past year. And in addition, substantial additional risk in the event of a casualty or damage. If the hotel were ever to suffer a casualty event where the cost to restore the hotel exceeds 50% of the structure's value, then the hotel would not be allowed to rebuild, be rebuilt. That's a very punitive measure. The proposed elimination of hotel uses in the H-40 threatens a significant loss of property rights and a considerable loss of value. We would urge you to reconsider this point. At the very least, existing hotels like the Grand Beach on the west side of Collins should be exempted from the proposed use prohibition. I know, as the mayor said, funding is preliminary. At this point, it's a mere framework for discussion. And so I will reserve further comment for the time being. But I do look forward to continuing this discussion with you in the coming days as the new zoning code undergoes further review. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Next speaker, please. Speaker will be Peter Hickey. Peter, Peter, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Uh, yes, Peter Hickey, 9250 Bay Drive. 
Um, I, I'm very concerned about this resolution and, and certainly opposed to it. Um, my first concern and request is that um, a little bit later, the town attorney can clarify for everybody what zoning in progress means. What is the impact of that language? Because um, Ileana already touched on this. If we pass this resolution, then all of a sudden this becomes law, even in a temporary state, that's tremendous financial impact um, for many residents. Uh, I'm not a developer, okay? And I've, I've sent you know the commission letters on this. I've spoke on this topic before in front of previous commissions. I thought we were down to a few details. Like we were almost there when it came to issues of building homes that are out of scale or you know other overdevelopment issues. Now we're going to rush to the end and then have to clean up the mess. Democracies are messy. We have to go through the process as George and others have pointed out. We can't rush to the end and then try to clean it up. That's gonna uh, create tremendous litigation. You're already hearing it from the developers. I'm a homeowner. I'm a, a teacher that bought a double lot. I'm not a developer that bought a double lot. And I've been paying taxes on that double lot. I've invested on that, I've raised my kids. That's my financial security, if nothing else. And th this is a taking. This is in my, from my perspective, th this is an overreach. And you know, it's not the federal officials that run our lives. We can get sucked into the news with all that. It's the local government. It's this commission and the bureaucrats that hold the power that really impact citizens and residents. So you, the commission, I applaud you for your service and I really appreciate it, but also recognize and appreciate the power and influence you have. And this is not something that we're rushing to the end. We need to go through this process. Uh, I, I support wholeheartedly everything that Nellie and Vice Mayor Paul have already stated. We, we have to do the messy work. We don't need a resolution to have a workshop. And we've been doing that for years. Um, so I respectfully would, you know, be against this resolution and please let's revisit this and really uh, do a thorough job so it serves all the residents and the investors here too. Um, this is reality. This is the world we live in. This is the business and we all need our homes to appreciate. I'm not the only one. Come on, please. Thank you very much for your attention once again. Um, I appreciate the time. Sure. Next speaker, please. Speaker, it's Leah Rose. Leah, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Thank you, Leah Rose, 8851 Froud Avenue. Um, for those residents that don't have the time in their lives to become intimately familiar with all three versions of the code that they're required to comply with, I just want to point out one of the um, egregious and completely wasteful provisions of the mayor's version of the code that he drafted. Basically, he's unilaterally decided that the size of construction signs only, not any other signs, must be made smaller to literally less than half the size of a standard sheet of paper. This has never been discussed or mentioned by any commissioner or resident at any of these meetings. But for some reason, the mayor used taxpayer money to rewrite this portion that only affects the size of construction signs in the single family district. If you listen to these meetings, regularly, then you might know that my husband, Jeff Rose, does a lot of construction in the neighborhood. And when he often speaks out against the mayor's policies, the mayor then claims that my husband has some ulterior motives or putting money in his pocket, or like he just did, essentially calls him a liar. So at least to my family, it's really no surprise that the size of construction signs are being targeted and changed to basically the size of an index card. Realtor signs, by comparison, though, are permitted to be over 10 times the size of a construction sign. But that, of course, was not changed in the mayor's code. No other substantive changes were made to the sign portion of the code, just construction size. So really, this exercise just shows that the mayor's flexing and using his position to do what he wants and to serve his own purposes. There's no other justification. And sadly, the residents are the ones that pay for this. I mean, is this really one of the pressing matters of our town right now? We're going to target someone who puts a lot of effort into not only these meetings, but making homes nicer in our community. We should really be more effective as a town in using our time, our resources, and our money to address what's actually important and not personal grudges. And yes, I recognize that my family has an interest in having bigger signs because that's our business. But really, 
the sign, the size of it is not the point. The point is how ridiculous and blatant the mayor's actions are, and they should be checked as a whole, not just when it comes to construction signs. So I would just really urge commissioners to think twice about approving this document as a new zoning in progress that people must now follow, because I would be wary of what other self-serving items are unnecessarily included in it and what implications that they could have in the long run. Thank you. Okay, next speaker. Next speaker is Horace Henderson. Horace, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Good evening. Horace Henderson, 9195 Collins Ave. Happy New Year all. I come to all of these meetings and Jeff Rose and Joshua Epstein have been screaming, literally screaming at the mayor to get the new planning and zoning code through. The mayor is the planning and zoning committee head. The sunshine laws don't allow the mayor to talk to the commissioners to discuss this, except in this meeting. That is his job. Jeff Rose, Josh Epstein, and others beat the mayor up no matter what he does on this. Shame on you, Jeff and Joshua. Stop. You have lost all credibility. How is this town going to get anything done this way? I want to thank the commission and the mayor for the work you do in this process. And this is a process. This is a step in the process. Please, let's calmly get through this process and get to a final planning and zoning code. Thank you. Good night. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Ruth Malo. Ruth, please say your name and address for the record in your comments. Hi, and the Shimshon for Ruth Malul, again, 9540 Bay Drive. How are you all? Um, I just want to echo some of the previous people who spoke about this uh, zoning changes, and I believe that uh, some of the commissioners already voiced their opinion, and I believe that we need to uh, reconsider and consider again what are we what we're doing over here because some of the items i know i've heard from other people some of the items do not apply to me or anything like that but um on the when it comes to a splitting of the lot it definitely it applies to me and i am greatly um going to be hurt if i'm going to be hurt um monetary of course you know um if that is something that you decide to do and um, I just wanted to let you know and voice my opinion that, you know, we're not going to keep quiet. I believe that the town has uh, to consider that too, that uh, we, will, uh, we will oppose strongly to that point in the uh, zoning. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I want to, I just would like to take a second to address a couple comments and then I'll get you. You all get to talk? You keep talking after every speaker. This is the third time you've done it. We, we all talk after all the speakers. Right, but we only speak once when everybody's done for three minutes. That's the rule and you keep- Everybody has spoken one time. So stop interrupting, okay? No, when all the public speakers are done, we have three minutes. Everybody has spoken already, okay? No, so that, you cannot you know, speak- stop, stop, again, Eliana, you, you are out of order. You're you out of order. You you are completely out of order, okay? Are there no more Everybody has spoken once, okay? Now, if you want people to speak twice, we'll go again, okay? But everybody has spoken once. So the bottom There's line no is... public speakers. Is that correct? Is everybody has closed? spoken once. Okay, so public comment is closed? Public comment is closed. Great. Now we can go discuss. Jeez. So anyway, that's what I've been trying to say for two minutes. A couple of things I want to address. The sign issue that Mrs. Rose brought up. Uh, she's exactly correct. The, uh, the sign issue has been addressed. I had many, many complaints about very, very large construction signs all over town, all over town, probably 15 very large signs and with respect to the size relative to real estate signs, which go up on houses that are for sale, these signs are more than twice the size. The other thing is 
Uh, when I spoke to the attorney about making this change, and yeah, I did make this change because I was asked to make the change. We copied Coral Gables' rules. That's it. I directed the attorney to look into what Coral Gables does because I think if it's good enough for Coral Gables, it's good enough for Surfside. And that's exactly what we did. On the lot splitting, this is just my opinion and I put it forward, just like you put your nine things forward at the first meeting, Commissioner Salzauer, and it's up for debate. I don't believe that people should come into Surfside, buy the large, beautiful houses along the outside of our prop of our, of our town and subdivide those lots. I don't think those lots should be subdivided further. And I don't think the lots on the interior should be subdivided further. For instance, should the people on a 50 foot lot be able to put townhomes on their lots if they want to? I just think that's a personal preference. And my personal recommendation is that we don't allow lot splitting in town because we end up with properties like we have up on Bay Drive that we all know about that are so close together that you could almost they could almost reach out the window and touch the other house. That's what the old zoning code has given us. So yes, I have proposed that we not be splitting lots. However, there is a house on Biscay Island which has such a big lot that it could probably be subdivided into two and still remain huge. So I think we need to have a conversation about that. I think there are people that feel like their exit plan is to live here and then at the end subdivide their property, sell it and build a bigger house, two bigger houses and profit from that. You know, personally, I don't know if that's the best thing for Surfside, but you know what? That's gonna be a commission question to answer. And that's all we've got here. We've got a series of proposals Everybody seems to be hyperventilating about it. Nothing has changed. Nothing is written in stone. It's all there for discussion purposes, and that's all. You guys can sit on it for the next six years if you want to, or we can act on it, okay? We're, we're, we're charged with that. So that's, that's my piece. Who's next? Yes, Eliana, and then the vice mayor. Okay, I'd like three minutes, please. Thank you. Um, first of all, I wanna say that Again, it's not that we don't think the zoning code needs some tweaks. It needs tweaks. And if George, um, you know, if we have a document and we need to go through it, but you just presented a zoning code, you threw it out there a week and a half ago to all of us that I'm assuming you had carefully read through. It had something in it that pretty much targeted one resident who has a beef with you. You're saying now that, oh, you just got that from Coral Gable. So maybe- How did we target? I'm talking, I'm, don't interrupt. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, it only targets Jeff Rose's signs and we know that. Okay, we all know that. His wife is yeah. completely right on that, all right? But you're telling me that you have already vetted this code before it came out to the rest of us because you put it on here as a um, as a resolution and you said you want it to be the zoning in progress, which means that you are vouching for the fact that you at least read through it because you know the rest of us didn't. It's now turning out that even you didn't read it carefully and there's items in there that need to be changed further proof that this should not be at the resolution stage. This needs to take many steps backwards to workshops where we work through this. And it should not have been something that you just told the attorneys, copy Coral Gables. We are not Coral Gables. We're a completely different town. We have a completely different vibe. We have a completely different people that live here. We're not trying to be Coral Gables. We're not trying to be Bay Harbor. We're not trying to be Bell Harbor. We're Surfside. We have a very unique character and that's why people choose to live here. I also wanna point out I found it digging through my papers while people were talking and I was present at the meeting and listening. And I just forwarded it to everybody as well. An email that I sent out that Sandra sent out on July 1st, which says, please distribute ASAP zoning, Surfside rewrite, draft ordinance, amending definition of lot coverage. This was circulated to everyone. It was in our agenda packets as early as July 1st. It was, I went through it with Ed Martos. We went through it, George Kruslis looked at it. We drafted it to make sure because one of the air problems was that people were taking the 40% lot coverage and there were all these exemptions that it didn't count towards lot coverage. And so the house was all over the place, okay? So what we did is we fixed it with this ordinance. It was on the agenda. It was in the agenda multiple times. Of course, we never got to it because we were too busy doing Black Lives Matter things and all kinds of other, you know, whatever you were trying to push that time where you were against this, this, and I was a persecuting whatever and all that nonsense that occupied you all summer instead of getting to this. 
Okay, see this? It says draft right across the front in big letters. This is what your zoning code needs to say on it. It needs to say draft on every page. Yes. Then we need to go to workshops. It's not a resolution. We can vote tonight to have workshops and talk about it, but we're not voting on a resolution and it's certainly not gonna be a zoning in progress. I would not support that. And don't tell me that I didn't do it because it was here. And when I asked for us to vote on it, you said, and you can watch the meetings yourself, you said, oh, oh, we're gonna take care of that later in our new zoning code. Oh, we're gonna take care of that later. Let's not do it tonight. And we had the same thing with gross acreage. We could have fixed all these problems and- Thank moved you. And Tina, go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you, Mayor. So I just you know, have to step back a few speakers to when you responded to someone and you read uh, some of these things because I looked up too in my, in my notes and previous agendas and all that and I had asked the clerk, I think you read the email that the clerk sent me back and some of the information is not correct. Um, the zoning code was not on the agenda in March 31st meeting, I checked. Um, it was discussed at the April 28th meeting. And what you read is only partially true because I made the motion to place the ad for the zoning in progress. We never voted to redo the entire zoning code. So that was not voted on. Um, then we, it was the motion that you read that was to uh, stay, place the zoning in progress on the May 12th meeting. And it was never discussed at the May 12th meeting, but we did have, uh, zoning meeting, a totally dedicated meeting to zoning uh, May 14th. We still hadn't voted on a whole new code. From the, all the minutes I read back and forth from the different meetings, including the two zoning workshops, one that I was at, one that I was not at, um, the direction from the commission was to go with the good points of the 2006 code and incorporate them into the current code and fix all the loopholes. You know, I don't think any of us wanted a whole new code, uh, except for you, I guess. I mean, it, it, please, if anyone else supported this, speak up about it, because I don't remember voting for a whole new code. I wanted to just fix a few things. And and I think, you know, it's just, it's like, let's just move on from this point. And, you know, you can have your workshops for this code. I, I look forward to reading it and seeing how we can make it work. But honestly, I, the resolution is putting things too far ahead. We're, we're moving faster than we should have been. There should have been workshops leading up to the formation of this code because there's no input in this code except for you and whatever uh, the attorneys picked up from the public meetings we had together. That's okay, all. Tina, we can play that game if you want. That's that's ridiculous. Okay, I still have I'm time. Looking. I am not playing games. Let's uh, just uh, move on yeah. with this thing. We, 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 you know, again, I'm reading from a January 13th email. Is your time, or is the timer running on you now? I, I'm responding. But you okay? said the time. I don't think in, you have to respond. Do me a uh -oh. favor. It's my time. I'm kind of done, but you know, I'm not playing games here, Mayor. Well, Please get I, that clear. Yeah, but you are misstating facts. Go ahead, Charles. Thank you. At, at this point, you know, we've learned that process matters. Um, process has been messy. Um, we heard from some speakers who commented that gut democracy is messy. Um, and um, um, I, I right now make a motion to just not approve this particular um, um, resolution, but just to simply direct the town manager who has now been in, in his position for more than a month. <laughs> he has a lot on his plate, but he can certainly, um, you know, take a look at what's been done and set forward the path to move us forward. Um, I'm grateful for those who, who, who have, um, you know, attended and participated, participated from the public, offering public comment. Um, residents and members um, of the business community alike, um, including those who are representing the business community. Um, I, I heard you, even if I wasn't on screen, um, your, your, uh, your voices are, um, you know, are not only heard, but your concerns are legitimate. Um, I may not see eye to eye with you on every one of them, but I respect that. And, um, and this is a community of residents, businesses, and, um, and rules, um, a town of rules and regulations and process. Um, I don't wanna leave things hanging. I want an optimal code in, 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 uh, in force. We do have the right to make things more restrictive going forward for sustainability, for a future that's viable for the town. 
um, given how global conditions, economic conditions, um, and the reality for us is, is changing in this community. Uh, but it's good to be done in a thoughtful manner. And, um, you know, so I would like to, to just get this back on track. Um, we have spent a lot of time on it. I don't think that it's wasted time because people have shown through their comments that they're constructive too. And they're also doing their jobs of representing their interests. And I respect that. Um, but let's just get back to the way that this government is designed. And that's for the town manager to lead us um, and advise as appropriate. Um, even when, when we don't pursue a process, process that's as clean as it could be. Thanks. Very good. Thank you, Charles. Nelly, anything? Go ahead. No, can't hear you. Hello, can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. I, I just have a question here because I'm a little confused at all this um, going back and forth. And I, I thought we already had a zoning in progress and that it didn't expire until February. So I'm not sure exactly what we're doing here. Um, and I thought we were gonna start doing workshops and informing our residents. I mean, so to understand this, is this more stuff being added to that previous zoning in progress that doesn't expire until February? Is this what this is? Because, I mean, these are things that nobody has discussed before. And if it's new things that are being added prior to the expiration of the current zoning in progress, then this is a problem. Nothing's but, being added, Nelly. Nothing's then, being what, added. What, then what is the problem if we already approved this back in, when was the last time there was a- there is, there, there is no problem. We have a zoning in progress. It expires in February. We'll February. have to renew that current zoning in progress at some point and keep extending it. So there is no problem. But, but worse this, than it, I'm sorry, but weren't we supposed to do workshops in these three months? I thought that that was the idea when we when we extended the zoning in progress back in, when was the last extension, Tony? Was it December, October, November? It was published in November 24th. November 24th. On November 24th, I remember that we said, we're gonna extend the current zoning in progress. And here we are arguing about this that I'm not quite sure exactly why we're arguing. Can if, I, this, can... if nothing has been changed, then why can't we just start these workshops with this is what we really need to do? Can I, can I answer that question? Okay. Yes. First of all, let's just be clear. Tina, you know, you, you said that, you know, why you, you want to talk to every person. Explain first, that. To first of all, you know, you, you, you're going to go after me. I asked me. a question, Eliana, and he's answering it. But, but it doesn't matter. I, you know, and, and again, I'm going to speak for two minutes and then you get to speak for two minutes. But the bottom line is, is, the vice mayor asked the question. She said, we didn't ask for a whole new zoning code. You didn't get a whole new zoning code. You know what you got? You got the 2006 code. You got the best of the 2006 code and you got the best of the new code. And I wasn't just Charles Burkett doing it, okay? There were a lot of people giving their comments to the attorney and you can ask the attorney, he, he can sort of go through who he was talking to, okay? but. The whole idea of the zoning in progress was to get to the point where we had something to discuss. We now have something to discuss and everybody is, you know, not everybody, but Tina uh, and Commissioner Salzhauer are busy saying they don't want the resolution. The resolution is just a direction to the manager to start having the meetings now. Sandra has her hand up. Oh, okay, but you know what? You keep interrupting me, and I reset my clock back to a minute and a half. She's please. Her hand up. Okay. Again, are you running the meeting, Salzauer? Are um, you running the meeting? You know what? I could do a better job. Are you are you running the meeting? It's ridiculous. Okay. I think we have so, a motion on the table. You, you know, you know what? You can't what? control. Leanna, yourself. you need to really stop because I had my time. You had your time and you keep interrupting this and it's already 11.06. Are we extending this meeting or no, are we going yeah. home? Okay, 
you can't control yourself. Okay, do me a favor, just control yourself. Okay, the bottom line is the resolution is just to resolve to direct the manager to begin the process of bringing everybody in. And I'm gonna read it for the benefit of the residents. The resident, the resolution authorizes and directs the town manager to work with the town clerk, the administration, the town mayor and commission, and the planning and zoning board to coordinate and schedule a process and timeline for review and coordination and consideration of the proposed new zoning code. So all it is, is a direction, the resolution is nothing but a direction to go ahead and start talking about the new code. That's all it is, folks. Now you can call it whatever you want, but that's what it says in the agenda. Read it for yourself. All right, we're gonna go uh, around again. I still had a minute, hold on, because I still had a minute and four go seconds. Ahead. Go ahead, Nelly, okay. and then we're gonna go so around again. So my question here is, has there been any changes to this zoning in progress that's being presented to us today since November 24th? Yes or no? Please, Tony, kindly answer. There is not a zoning in progress in front of you. The resolution does not direct for zoning in progress. There's no change either in the zoning in progress, right? I don't understand what the problem is then. There, there is no problem. There is so no why problem. Is they, but, why is Eliana and Tina making such a huge issue? Okay, Please. well, let's let Eliana talk now for a minute, and then we're going to go around for a minute, okay? Yeah, I get so, two minutes, two minutes. Mayor, no, I'm, I'm sorry, gonna, if I could interrupt, I believe Sandra needs a motion to extend the meeting. It's beyond 11 p.m. Okay, how long are we, how, how late are Five we going to go tonight? No, huh? longer. No, we have to get to the oh, I can't be doing this again until 12 o'clock last night. 12 o'clock, yeah. we have to get to COVID because people are dying, thanks. Okay, COVID? well, oh listen, let, is, <laughs> is there, a, listen, look, again, guys, we've wasted a bunch of time talking about stuff that is clear and important. You put this on the agenda. You you ate up the whole it, meeting it, with it, this. It, it didn't, no, you ate up the whole meeting. No, you this. did. You put this on the agenda as a resolution. You could have just held workshops. Can I please get a motion to extend? I'd like to make a motion to extend the meeting by an hour. No. no. Okay, can we get to COVID? No. no. Uh, COVID. Half wait hour. a minute. Wait, guys, guys, wait a minute. There's a motion to extend the meeting for an hour. Is there a second? No. Okay, there's not a second. Okay, is there another motion? Motion Tina. to extend for 20, 20 minutes. All right. Motion to is there a second to that? Please, no. Okay. Ten okay, minutes. Okay, Salzhauer is seconding it. Okay. Yes. So so 20 minutes and we'll go to eleven thirty. Okay, go ahead, Commissioner Salsa. Wait a minute, nobody has voted on this. this oh, I'm sorry, yet. it's getting late. We're oh, talking, wait. two minutes, please, two. No, 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 wait, no, no, wait. we're we have first voting the... to see if we can extend Stop. the meetings. Oh, Stop, okay. guys. Stop. We have a motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Yes. All the questions. Okay. I have discussion on the motion because there was a motion made from Tina, vice, the vice mayor, it was the first motion of this discussion to just table it. And that's what I voted to second. I'm trying to talk about, I'm trying to okay. second the motion. I, I don't think this is Guys, second. guys, again, I'm stop. Either. Stop, Charles, <laughs> Charles, discussion Charles, stop. Discussing Charles, stop. I, why should please. I stop when please. we just please. wasted it? In because we have, we, have, we have to extend the meeting. So I need a motion to, there's a motion to extend the meeting for 20 minutes. There's a second. Is there any discussion on that motion? All right, call the question. Commissioner Velasquez? No. Commissioner Salazar? Yes. Commissioner Castle? No. Vice Mayor Paul? Yes. Mayor Burkett? No. Mayor, the motion fails, the meeting must end now. All right, so the meeting is right ended. Now, okay, Did Tina, you have it? Yeah, I have a motion on the table. Can we call the vote on my motion and then end I'm the meeting? Second, I'm seconding her motion. What is the motion again? Restated, please. The motion is to reject this resolution. And okay, um, you all can right. Have is there any discussion? You can have manager and schedule workshops without a resolution. I move all to right. reject this. So, so we're scheduling workshops, but we're not doing it through the resolution. Is there all a right. second? To I'm, I'm going to second that, and I want to also right. have my minute to talk. Thank you. Because you. Okay, that's a second. Now we're going to have discussion. 
Mayor, we'll go around. Does anybody want to discuss that particular motion? Didn't we say we're not extending the meeting? This is well, voting. Let's get on with it. Well, again, I'm trying to do this properly, okay? Is there any discussion on the motion to Tina's motion that was pending? Her, what what her motion? I'm going to restate her motion. We've been discussing motion. for the past hour and a half. Hold on, Nelly, please help me out here. The motion is to direct the manager to have workshops, but to not do it through no, a resolution. No, that's not the the motion is to reject the resolution and direct the manager to, I'm not even, I don't even want that on there. I'm rejecting this resolution. Do what you want to do. You can schedule meetings without. Uh, well, you don't uh, have you know, to reject the resolution because it was never passed. We're rejecting it. We're I'm rejecting, rejecting it. it. The motion is to reject it. Call the vote and we can end well, this. Wait meeting. a minute. Then you don't want to have people to have a, a workshop so they can understand this resolution. No, I, I do want learning in process. Yeah. Workshop, but you don't need okay, a workshop. Wait a minute, guys. You guys, don't need a resolution a for the workshop. Okay, wait, wait. Again, we're going to restate it. You're rejecting the resolution. Yes. But That's you're directing, you know, Salsauer, do me a favor. Again, stop. Okay, okay Tina. You're rejecting the motion, the re resolution, and you want to direct the manager to have workshops. Is that correct? No, you don't need. I mean, you can direct him for the workshops. I don't need to do that, and I don't. Okay, so you that. just want a motion to reject the resolution? Correct. All right. Okay, you don't need and the resolution a second for a workshop. So I you want to reject. That. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Now let me restate it. Your reject. You want your motion is just to reject the resolution. And there's a second. Okay, any discussion on the motion to reject the resolution? Yes. Okay, go ahead, one minute. Okay, I would like to say what, because you, you're you gonna say now in the Gazette that you were trying to save Surfside, but Tina and Salzhauer ruined it and you were gonna be the savior of everyone in town and that's not the case here. What you were trying to do is slam through a, co a, zo a new zoning code that only you had seen until a week ago with every single thing that you wanted from the very beginning that none of us remember voting to spend $84,000 of taxpayer money to do and then spring it on us at a meeting so that you eat up the entire meeting time so we don't even get to discuss COVID, which is, situ which is a situation that's killed hundreds of thousands of people and that is a clear and present danger to the threat of our residents. That's what you did because you thought it was more important to indulge your ego. So I am seconding her motion. We should pass to reject this. If you'd like to call workshops to work on this zoning code, you can do that, Mayor. You don't need to do it at a Thank meeting. You. you don't need to do it as a resolution. Don't interrupt Thank me. I've got eight more Thank seconds. Thank you. Anybody, anybody else? I've got five more seconds, okay? Thank you. So you don't need to interrupt and thank me. I'd like to thank Charles, the residents for speaking thank up. Thank you. Go ahead, Charles. I mean, I'll support rejecting it as, as I would have when it was first made. Um, and it's based on not, not the proposed language of directing the town manager um, to, to put a framework for, for moving it forward, but it's because it's, it's attaching um, the proposed um, you know, revision to the code that some that that we haven't really seen or discussed, um, where there are some new items in there, even as simple as the signage, um, and um, and by doing that, it it presents it's moving that document forward, um, which hasn't been vetted, um, so that's why I'm tabling it, not the spirit of of um, of having the town manager provide the framework, which um, I think we could have just done more simply by starting to have the. Um, workshops as everyone's proposed. Okay, thank you. Tina? I just want to call the vote. Okay, Nelly? I thought that we were supposed to have these workshops since since November. These things need to be start need to be scheduled. I don't understand why they're not being scheduled. We gave direction back in November that we need we were going to have workshops on the zoning in progress. I don't understand why this is not happening. And well, uh, on another note, calling this is like calling the pot, pot the kettle black. I mean, you talk about this bringing up this resolution like nobody knew about it. Well, the same thing happened with the ordinance on the beach chairs, by the way. Okay, nobody knew about it. Nobody, we had discussed it back in March. And then all of a sudden in July, three days before the ordinance, before the meeting, we get thrown this book. Oh, here. Approve whatever it is on this ordinance. Well, it's the same thing, but when you bring it up, it's an issue. When the mayor brings it up, it's not an issue. 
Thank you. Sorry, it, yeah. if I could interrupt, we never had a motion to extend the meeting and I don't want to oh. jeopardize what? the vote. So if we could at least get a motion to extend the meeting retroactive from 11 o'clock for five minutes. Well, additional. listen. I, but this meeting is supposed to be over 20 minutes ago. Nobody voted to extend it. So we put this back on for the next meeting in a no month. No way. No way. Well, no yes way, way because the meeting is over. We're not going to eat up the whole next meeting with the same The people. meeting is over. I'll okay, motion to guys. extend it retroactively. The, the meeting... Go yeah. ahead. The meeting is I second. Not I second. All right. So listen, I, I have my discussion and then we'll have a vote. Okay. The bottom line is. We have to extend the meeting okay. first. Yeah, really quick. So. Okay. Call the question. We had a previous a motion to extend the meeting 20 minutes. It's 11 18. Can we just do it retracted to 11? So we have to 11 20. Yes. Call the question. Commissioner. Hold on. Commissioner Salsauer? Yes, of course. Commissioner Castle? Yes. Commissioner Velasquez? He's not here. Vice Mayor Paul? Yes. Mayor Burkett? Yes. Mayor um, okay, so here's, here's the point, guys. Um, this is the silliest thing that you've done to date, okay? What you've done is you said... Oh, no, you're just going to be, be right are, up... Are, wait, 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 you know what? You know what? Ms. Salzhauer, Ms. Salzhauer, you are out of control officially. Okay. Officially. All up, Charlie. Are you done? No, I'm not. You're talking, and we're just calling the vote. Let's vote. You know, you know, again, I'm running the meeting. When you're the mayor, you'll run the meeting. Okay. Everybody gets to talk. And that includes me. Okay. Thank you. The bottom line is, is this is the silliest thing that this commission has done thus far. What, what happened here was I put the draft of the zoning code on the agenda that everybody saw and everybody had. We put it in the form of a resolution to direct the manager to start the process, okay? Because you guys, for some reason, want to try to stick it to me, we now are talking about not even having a discussion on this. You said basically, it's up to me to figure out a way to get this proposed code out in front of people and to have workshops, okay? That's what's going on here. That's exactly what's happening. And it's a disappointment. The problem is, is we've got a lot of people waiting in line How to get long their ideas. For? Again, again, it's one minute, okay? So the bottom line is, is that we don't have now a framework. We don't have a process. Congratulations. Good work. Okay, call the question, Madam yeah, Clerk. First of all, you know damn well you can call a workshop any- Call the question, Madam Clerk, and tell, Commissioner, and, and, and turn that microphone off, uh, Jose. Commissioner Castle? Go ahead and call the question. Yes. Commissioner Velasquez is absent. Commissioner Salazar? Is my mic on? Yes. Yes, and the mayor knows he can call a workshop anytime. Vice Mayor Paul? Yes, and I agree. The mayor can call a workshop anytime, and I will be happy to attend. We are not stopping workshops. We just are stopping the resolution that is moving forward, a new zoning code that hasn't been vetted. Thank you. Mayor Burkett? No. <laughs> really? Okay. Good. Motion to adjourn, please. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Good night, everybody.